Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome. I am Trooper SJP, and this is the Academic Foxhole. And um, I'm happy to have you all here. It makes me, it fills me full of joy. Um, you know, this is us. We're, we're playing the long dark, and um, we are going to do that. Hey, Margaret Catter TV. Uh, I love walking in the frozen rain after it has frozen the grass. Ooh. Silly, that is that is really nice. Yeah, right. Like my mustache is a, could be a little bit better, but I have to wear a mask when I, I teach today. Today's a teaching day, and I have to wear my mask, and that messes up my my uh, handlebar just a little bit. You know, uh, Krellen's like, no, no game until after Millie Vanilli. Krellen, I was gonna say that we're gonna play, but we have to talk about Millie Vanilli first. Just like a little bit of. Millie Vanilli. Name game. Brown's like, I'm just here to find out a trooper who wants to talk about Millie Vanilli, so no one's allowed to distract him from talking about Millie Vanilli. I, I'm gonna, I have to talk about, look, what I have to tell you is, the name game. Come on, everybody. Mm, mm, I said, now let's play a game. I bet you I can make a rhyme out of anybody's name. The first letter of the name. Mm, Mm, I treat her like it wasn't there. Mm, mm, and then a B on F. Mm, 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 on M will appear. And then I say Bo at a B. Then I say the name. Then banana fan or info. Then I say the name again with an F very plain. Then a fee. Fi and a mo. Then I say the name again with an M this time. And there isn't any name that I can't rhyme. Mm, 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 mm. Skabinak, 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 Bobabinak, Banana, Fana, Fulfabinak, Fifa, Momabinak, Skabinak, the name game. E. Thank you for that resub. It says earwigs in the anime. Absolutely. Thank you, Skabinak. 56 months. You're old. Not as old as me. Uh, you, you think the pink... Hey, Skabinak, thank you for the compliment on the pink. Uh, I, You know, Lindy thinks I should go for a darker pink next time. So we will see how it goes. Oh, silly, M M Millie likes the chops, right? I had to do the chops too, right? If you don't do the, if you don't do the chops, I feel like, what are you even doing? You know what I mean? I didn't do the eyebrows, but that's because I did not want to put bleach by my eyes. I just felt like bleaching the, my eyebrows, which would involve putting bleach on my eyebrows and my eyes are right here, just seemed like it would probably be a bad idea. So I'm just leaving the eyebrows as they are. Uh, so, you know, uh, in a couple weeks, I'll be 40. So yes, fair. Let me know when. So, uh, 40 isn't old. My little brother's 40. Okay. So just use paint. Well, you know, um, uh, if I were on Zoom, which I'm currently not, Zoom has a little thing so you, I can change my eyebrows pink in Zoom. So like if I need to, I can just have, you know, speaking of pink hair, I, you know, I dyed it pink because I had a, a little wig, like a pink wig, a, kind of like a floppy haired boy band wig. But I realized that what I want right now, which I don't have, but maybe I can look for it. I want a pink pompadour wig. A wig, not a floppy haired boy band wig, but a full on big giant pompadour wig. That is what I want. I don't know if there are any giant pink pompadour wigs, but I feel like I need one. And I only realized that this moment. It was in this exact moment that I realized that what I need in my life is a giant pomp pink pompadour wig. Etsy, yes. Yes. Uh, I have like, I need to bleach my hair and dye it. I have like four shades of pink to use. Ooh. Mm. I bet someone has one on Etsy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, don't let me forget that I want to, I want to look for a pink pompadour wig, by the way. Also, we have a giveaway for today. Our game giveaway is going to be, uh, let's see. How about Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse? That's what we're going to do. We're going to do Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse as our giveaway, but that'll be later. Uh, Prax said, oh, you could probably find a blonde one and dye it says a uh, silly. Although I think that to do a blonde, to have a blonde wig and dye, I'd need uh, human hair. Uh, 
I need a human hair wig because synthetic hair, you can't really dye. But if I had a human hair wig, I could dye it. But I'm going to tell you this. I have now more wigs than I used to have, but I've also spent like $10. Like I buy really cheap wigs, like not good wigs, but cheap wigs. Like my wig is not like a luxurious, awesome human hair wig. My, weirs, my wig is like, you know that song by the B-52s wig, you know? And Fred goes, what's that on your head? And then like Cindy and, and um, Kate go, a wig. And he goes, what's, I said, what's that on your head? A wig, right? Wigs on fire, right? That's, that's what's going on. Like I get cheap wigs. Brack says, I'm just going to point out that there is a week store that's down this, a wig store that's down the street from where I live uh, that I know has had various shades of pomp for the past. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's Sage of Squirrels. How are you doing? I see you have a lurk. We don't have a lurk, man. We should maybe get one. In ATL. Ooh. Hmm. Uh, Millie, I'm going to talk about Millie Vanilli right now. Uh, I'm trying to be more chili vanilla. <laughs> I have three and they're like mid tier. Like I was like, I need a wig, 10 bucks. Here we go. All right. Okay. So let me tell you about Millie Vanilli. I want to talk to you about my thoughts on Millie Vanilli right now and why I'm thinking about them. So today in class, you know, I'm teaching the history of rock and roll and I have two TAs and my TAs do a guest lecture. Uh, they each get to do one guest lecture in my class where they do, they, they pick one of the classes they want to do the lecture for and then they do the lecture for it. Um, and now I'm feeling like they should probably do, I'm not going to have them do it. I feel like it would probably be better for them to do two, like one where they get the first experience, I like give them feedback and the second where they do it again. But I just don't want to give it that many lectures. But anyway, so one of my TAs today uh, took the class for today. And so I just sat in the audience and I watched my, um... wait, you have a thing about the history of pop punk? I want to hear about it. I want to hear about it. Um, so today's lecture was MTV. And uh, this was the MTV lecture. So we're in the 80s. And uh, for the, and when I have the TAs teach the lecture, I give the, I let them see what the playlist was that I had used, but I say, you can do whatever you want on your playlist. You can change it however you want. It's up to you. Like, here's the topic, MTV, you do your thing. You want to make a documentary about it? <gasps> oh, Margaret Catter TV, you should make a history of pop punk. We just did punk, by the way. We just did punk uh, Tuesday. Tuesday was the punk lecture. Well, technically, it was the punk new wave art pop alternative explosion is what it was. It was uh, basically looking at um, specifically pop punk 1994 to now. No, you should totally do that. Uh, absolutely, you should do that. The lecture I did on Tuesday was about... Basically, the lecture I did on Tuesday was about breaking down the notion. like Because there's a... Um, uh, people like to... Def there's like a thing where like punk is real and new wave is fake. Like punk is hardcore and awesome and, and new wave is commercial and not awesome. Like there's like, there's that dividing line that happened like, oh, this is good stuff because it's punk and that's bad stuff because it's new wave. But part of my lecture on Tuesday was about how actually these were all this, all these bands hung out together and played at CBGBs together. We only made that distinction between pop and new wave a little bit after the fact, but like 76, they were like, those distinctions weren't like Blondie was punk too. Like, you know what I mean? Like we, we that we did not sort of separate them that heavily, and so I was like, you know, dealing with like a, I had I had a great recording, a video. I got a video uh, of uh, the B fifty twos right before their album hit, playing at a club in Atlanta, uh, and like you know, thinking about how all these people like you know how like they're here they are doing their thing, but also the ways in which the Sex Pistols were manufactured uh, by Malcolm McLaren to sell clothes that he and Viv, you know Vivian Westwood's clothes, right? So like just kind of like complicating all those things. And uh, I appreciate that. Uh, lurking without audio, but I'm still very down for a documentary about pop punk. Yes. Uh, that's what always happens why I specify. Mm -hmm. Ooh, USMTV versus UMTV in the 90s. I love UMTV so much. Yes. Uh, Tuesday was a punk lecture, he said with pink facial hair. You know. Margaret Catter TV says, because technically you could argue the Beach Boys and the Beatles are pop punk. Blondie is still, in my opinion, punk. I will fight him. See, Margaret Catter, people, people, look. What happened is that if you were a woman, they just excluded you from punk and called you New Wave instead. Like, they just did a bunch of messed up stuff, but I don't think that's fair. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, no, let's let's complicate this. Let's let's talk about this in a more complicated way. Um, now, whether the Beach... See, I, don't, I would not argue that the Beach Boys and the Beatles are pop punk because the notion of punk wasn't really happening then. They weren't even really pop... Like, I feel like you can't be pop punk before punk is a thing, if that makes any sense. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and also, I feel like these, their aesthetics were different. I feel like the the 
they weren't as nihilistic. Like there was just, I feel like it was different, um, you know, but like, it's cool. Uh, Millie says, it was so completely different than US MTV. When I came back to the US in 95, part of the biggest culture shock was how different the MTV was. Oh, tell me about it, Millie. Uh, <laughs> Millie, Millie. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, here's the thing. Um, I actually wouldn't call the Beach Boys or the Beatles pop rock. I would just call them rock. It's just that we now call them pop rock and usually because people want to discredit them. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, uh, because here's the thing. In the realm of the power of pop, uh, of rock, rock people dominate the discourse and in that framing, rock is good and pop is bad, right? Rock is real, pop is phony. And so when people call the Beatles pop, they're trying to discredit them and say that they're not really as real as the Rolling Stones usually is the, is the dividing line or like 70s rock, right? So like, the Beatles, like 64, 65, 66, right? So when people want to, when people call them pop or a boy band, that is not a compliment. They're usually doing that to try to discredit them because they tend to not value pop or boy bands, right? So um, I I wouldn't, because at the time, didn't people didn't call them that. People called them rock at the time. So I would call them rock because that is how people understood them at the time. Um, but I personally actually have nothing against pop. I think pop's fine. Uh, yeah. Margaret's like, people hate on pop and I hate them. Fair. Pop is for girls and they're for bad. Yeah. Good bubble and pop is my lifeblood. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's all that is true, right? Praxis had such an interesting conversation with this about my dad Monday night, specifically the generational categorization differences and how people of his generation who were listening to music at the time didn't have the same categorization differences that those looking back now impose upon that music. Yeah. And what's interesting to me is... Hmm... I don't necessarily think it's bad. I think it just depends, right? So for example, I would push back on pop rock for the Beatles since they were the center of rock at their time. Like they were very much what rock was. So I would push back on calling them pop rock because it doesn't make a lot of sense at the time. However, um, I understand calling the Stooges pre-punk or early punk, thinking of the Stooges as part of the punk trajectory, even though nobody would have called them punk at the time, but they're clearly part of a lineage that brings you to that space. And people in who were doing punk in the 70s were all very invested in the Stooges. And then the Stooges would then tour with all those punk bands. So then I can see that. I would probably call them proto-punk because they, you know what I mean? That's probably what I would call them. Um, depending, it might go either way. So like sometimes I feel like a little bit of distance can give you um, really important insight that might not have been happening at the time. But then I also sometimes think that like sometimes distance gives you more insight that's important, but sometimes distance makes you not see something that's important, if that's any. So basically I'm just saying that it depends and there's no hard and fast rule, but like both of those things can give you, uh, uh, can be important. Yes, also signing to people doesn't mean you've sold out. It means you want to have food in your fridge and pay your bills not to rob Peter to pay Paul. Absolutely. Um, is it, how about how, how you get from bad religion to rancid to black fight default? But yeah, absolutely. Also, I just kind of feel, anyway, so here's the thing about Millie Vanilla, right? So we're doing punk. I'll come back to that. But here's what I wanted to tell you. So today was MTV and my TA radically changed the playlist. And I was like, cool. You know what I mean? Like, awesome. I personally... I'm super excited when my TAs take the topic and just put totally different songs in there. I just think it's pretty exciting. So if I remember what I had put on the MTV playlist, uh, I did not have the Buggles video kill the radio star. I wanted to, but I didn't. I, and by the way, my video, my playlist changes, like some things remain core, but quite a few things sort of swap out here and then. So like I generally will have Like a Virgin, When Doves Cry, and then something by Michael Jackson, it might be Thriller, it might be Billie Jean, one of those two, usually it's one of those two, as like a core three, as like really important, important MTV massive icons. And then what I do instead of in, on top of those other three, sometimes I have Bruce Springsteen, Born in the USA. Uh, I often will have that one in there. So that's four. And I'll usually add in like another two to three videos. Um, I might do Sweet Dreams Are Made of This by The Arrhythmics. I will probably, I might do Aha, Take On the take on Me. Uh, I might do um, uh, Nasty by Janet Jackson. 
Sledgehammer by uh, Peter Gabriel. About that vibe, right? Uh, Spotify, would I grow up from garbage? Oh, MTV. No, it's MTV and we're doing the 80s, basically. So, like, we don't do... Um, yeah, we, we're just basically doing, like, 84 to 89, 90. Like, we're just in that sort of early, early MTV moment. So, we'll usually do the core the core three of Madonna, Michael Jackson, and Prince. Um, uh, and then, like, I, I, I will often do Janet Jackson. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'll usually do AHA and Bruce Springsteen. And then, like... Oh, sometimes I'll do... Um, What's Love Got to Do With That by Tina Turner, depending. Because I'm just kind of like, so like what I'm sort of thinking about is in that moment is um, sort of big icons. Like you do Tina Turner because she was an icon. And then how does she translate over into MTV? Uh, you do Michael Jackson, uh, Prince and Madonna because they're these really important central MTV figures. Take On Me because that video was really important. Um, absolutely. Was that important? Uh you were mixed for kind of like the gender bending eighties sort of moment. Um, Bruce Springsteen, because he was just as produced as Michael Jackson was. And as a matter of fact, he wanted to, he wanted born in the USA to be his thriller. So that kind of challenges certain ideas that I think is also pretty good. Um, so I kind of, did, I do kind of do this, this mix of stuff. And, um, but my, my TA, uh, so usually video kill the radio star I don't do not because I don't want to but just because I don't have time. Oh, sometimes I'll do um uh Rocket by Herbie Hancock depending on just depending on where we're at, right? So I'm kind of thinking about uh yeah, he wanted to be a thriller. He actually he he took Thriller as the br blueprint for Born in the USA. And the video for Born in the USA has like a famous film director do it. Like that is not and actually I also like I kind of Maybe the next time I should switch over to Dancing in the Dark. Even if we're just dancing in the dark. Can't start a fire. Can't start a fire without a spark. And maybe I should do that one because that one makes it a little bit more obvious what's going on. Because the thing about those those videos is that they're framed as if they're just concert footage and it's just him being real, but it's completely staged. Right? I mean, that's Courtney Cox is the random fan in the audience that he just pulls onto stage to dance with. She's not a random fan. She's an actor. The whole thing is staged, right? But like he saw Thriller and he thought that was really amazing and he wanted to do something that was that kind of produced. He wanted to have a big breakthrough hit that was that massive. He wanted that. And then he did that. But people, but the way he does it is by selling that it's not produced, right? That's Bruce Springsteen's sell is that he's not produced. He's like the working class guy that doesn't, you know, that's just authentic and doesn't doesn't work, you know, doesn't produce, right? But I mean, it's totally produced. Of course it is. And so maybe I should switch to Dancing in the Dark next year. Mm, perhaps that might be good. Anyway, uh, you know, may, big, and like he was inspired by, uh, uh, by Michael Jackson getting like film directors to film the videos, music videos. And so he did the same thing. So that, and this is not an insult because I do not think there's anything wrong with having production values. It's just that some performer's product is I'm not a product and other performer's product is I'm a product, right? But they're, they're all products. It's just how you're selling it, right? Uh, also because that video made Courtney Cox famous. Yeah, so I might swap next year. So this is how I, I kind of like swap it out some. Anyway, so my my TA did totally different videos. Well, he kept Prince uh, when doves cry. He kept that. He put in Buggles. Video Kid the Radio Star, which I sometimes do, sometimes I don't, just depending on how much time I have. So those two, I was like, okay, cool. And then let me tell you what else he did. He then did Prince Liberian Girl. Really interesting choice. If you've ever seen the video for Liberian Girl, that's a basically all of his celebrity friends are waiting around on set, waiting for him to show up so they can shoot the video for Liberian Girl. Uh, and he shows up at the very, very end and he's been filming the whole thing, right? Like the whole thing is like a behind the scenes of the video, except that it's also a fake behind the scenes of the video. And you can barely hear the song. It's super interesting. So he did uh, uh, Video Kill the Radio Star, Prince When Doves Cry, Liberian Girl by Michael Jackson, um, Paula Abdul, Opposites Attract, um, Millie Vanilli, Blame It on the Rain, and then Eddie Murphy, Put Your Mouth on Me. Those are the six he did. Uh, and I was like, well, that's super interesting. And he had a lot of really interesting things to say. 
And uh, of course, it was a completely different lecture because the songs were different, the videos were different. It would give you, I think at some, I think sometimes when I do my MTV lecture, I'll put in Dire Straits, Money for Nothing. That sometimes makes it on the playlist as well. Just kind of swap it up. So that was really interesting. And there's some really fascinating things uh, that came out of those videos being the things that you think about. A lot of it has to do with like what is being performed. Uh, but there are some things that he didn't talk about that I was really interested in, but we, you know, we'll get there. And one of the things is um, people did not respond well to Eddie Murphy's music career. Some people said he couldn't sing, which he can, he can sing, right? He's a singer. It's fine. Um, and one thing that I have often talked about is that um, going back to Rousseau, even there is a long-standing distrust of actors. People think that actors, there's a lot of reasons to just, I don't distrust actors. Heck, I, I am also an actor, but historically people have really distrusted actors, partially because actors fake feelings. Now, one of the reasons why I think method is so popular, method acting is so popular, is because method actors basically claim that they do not fake feelings. They are really truly feeling what they're feeling, that they are not acting, right? So like, I think one of the reasons why method actors are, you know, are kind of beloved by some folks um, is that they're like, no, no, I wasn't pretending to be cold. I really was cold. And I actually did get drunk on stage so that I wasn't pretending to be drunk. I really was drunk. So like, they're sort of like trying, like they're, like their thing is that like, you know, uh, they aren't acting. They're just really feeling it, which I feel like, well, that's not healthy. Maybe learn how to act anyway. But like this idea that one of the, my dear boy, why don't you try acting? As said our Lord Olivier to Dustin Hoffman, exactly. But in the past, the fact that actors could counterfeit emotions was very distressing to people. Um, very distressing to people for a couple of reasons. One just might be philosophical, like, what does that mean that you can, people who, who look like they're sad may not actually be sad. It makes people doubt their own ability to assess and judge things, right? That's kind of scary. But, and this is very interesting, this actually is about gaming. Haha! -ha! RPGs. GURPS. I'm going to talk about GURPS for a second. Right? And by the way, we're leading up to Millie Vanilli. So, in GURPS... You have um, various advantages and disadvantages. It's a system that has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, it was one of my first systems that I ever played that did have advantages and disadvantages, and it blew my mind and I loved it. And one of the things that GURPS has is social, social and cultural advantages and disadvantages. They don't just have things like, I'm afraid of spiders, or I only have one eye. They also have social and cultural disadvantages and advantages. So they have wealth, and status and looks um, as advantages and disadvantages, uh, social regard, uh, rank, social rank. Uh, I can't believe we went from the 80s MTV lecture to actors fake emotions to GURPS and now we're coming back to, oh, we're getting there. So there is this thing that happens in GURPS message boards. People argue, there are certain things people argue about in various message boards all the time, you know, like, there are various things that people like to argue about. If you play this game, people are going to argue about this. If you play that game, people are going to argue about that. There are these various topics that people like to complain about. And one of the things that people complain about on the message boards in GURPS is about how if your character, actually a bunch of things, if your character gets a lot of money dungeon dive, let's say you have a character and your character uh, has the poor disadvantage, let's say. And then you go off dungeon delving and you get a whole bunch of loot and treasure. A number of players think that you should be able to get a higher level wealth for free. And that's just not how GURPS works. GURPS, GURPS works if you want it, you must pay for it. it. It costs what it costs, right? So if your character has a disadvantage, poor, and you would like to not be poor anymore, you need to spend your character points to pay off that disadvantage to bring you up to the wealth level that you want to have. And uh, they say, well, that's not fair. If I just got all this gold, I should be able to like up, up, up my wealth and I shouldn't have to pay for it. Um, now, there are a couple things. One, if you got all that wealth, you probably got a bunch of experience points, which you could then use to buy off your disad. But wealth is not the same thing as money. 
wealth is not the same thing as money, right? It has happened multiple times that people win the lottery and who are people who are poor win the lottery and then very quickly they are poor again. Um, and it's not because they're irresponsible or anything like that. It's that wealth is more than just money. It's also having a lifetime of training, having connections, being able to get credit, um, having like investors and like wealth is not because like a lot of people didn't have cash, but they had wealth, right? Like wealth is like a whole complex set of things, which is not the same thing as necessarily as money. In some ways, it's about the ability to retain money, right? To retain money and to generate money, even if you don't have money, like there's a, there's like, there's a difference. So, um, they always say that like it, it, you know, it costs what it costs. You have to, you have to, and so like, if you, if you get all this money and you do not buy up your, your, your wealth level, that money is going to dwindle and go away eventually. Like, that's just what it means. If you do not, like, that's just how that goes because you're not going to be renewing it, right? So having the wealth means it becomes re a renewable resource versus a one-off resource, basically. Um, Scabbinac says, if you don't know you need to assemble a team, if you suddenly have a large amount of money, you're probably not going to have it long. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, you need a whole team. And the thing is, if you did not grow up with it, you don't know that you actually need an entire team of people and what people and which ones to trust and who you can trust. You don't have the kind of network of people to say, oh, yeah, this accountant, think about how many people who are poor become rock stars or something like that. And their managers embezzle everything from them. They end up having nothing because they don't like, like Elvis, Colonel Tom Parker's manager took 50% of everything he got because Elvis was super poor and he did not have, he did not have those like country club friends of his who could recommend a really good accountant. Right. Like there's like a there are things, right? There are things that come with being wealthy besides just the money. It has to do with connections and, and all and name and all that stuff, right? So but one of the other things they would complain about was status. Right. So in GURPS, you have status, right? Zero status is at level zero is what everybody gets for free. And that's just your average person. If you're like a, a mayor, maybe you have status one. Right. Um, right. Like, they, like you can get status. And in some campaigns, depending on how you set up your society, wealth will give you free levels of status. Uh, in some campaigns, high level of rank might give you some status as well. Um, but like, you know, their status and at the top are like, you know, kings and queens and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Billy Joel and the accountant who stole all the money then ran off to the islands. Yes. Absolutely. That's exactly what, you know what I mean? Like this happens. And then, you know, it's right. Um, so the thing about status is that it, it sort of measures your social rank, your social, your social, it's your social status. Right. Uh, and like people who are enslaved or criminals, they have like negative one or negative two status and, you know, all the way up to like, you know, president and whatnot. Like you could be president and have really high status, but not have, not have as high wealth, you know? Anyway. So somebody says, well, I don't get it. That doesn't seem right. It does, status doesn't make any sense because there's a reaction penalty, right? If you have a status five, if you have a status one and you're interacting with somebody with status five, you get like a minus four penalty because they have higher status. So it's a little bit harder to like charm them in certain ways, unless you're very good at charming. And anyone, anyway, somebody's like, well, that doesn't seem right because you can just pretend to have high status, right? You can just pretend to be high. Like if I have money and I dress in nice clothes and... I just act high status. How are they even going to know? How are they going to know that I'm not high status? Right. And so some people are like, that's not realistic because people can be able to pretend to be high status. Um, Dane Cook is a friend of his half brother. People can, yeah. And the thing is, uh, hey, Hawkeye, the thing is about pretending to be high status is that that way of thinking, $11 million, whoa, whoa. Um, people who say that are A, Americans. A, they're Americans, and B, they haven't, A, they're Americans, that's a big one, that's a really big one, uh, which means they believe in the myth of meritocracy, and also coming from a very presentist, hey, Hescape, I'm doing very well, they're coming from a very presentist sort of way of thinking, and I was trying to explain to them that in the past, and even sometimes not that far in the past, you could tell somebody's status from the way they talked, from what their bodies looked like. Um, I mean, status was just written on your body 
in ways that were very difficult to disguise. You couldn't just pretend to be a noble for the most part because, hey, the Wandering Inn, how are you? Good evening, but it's actually morning for me because I just woke up. Good morning. We're talking about, we're good at, we're getting on our way to, to Millie Vanilli is where we're at. Curlin says, yeah, in American society, you can fake status with money, but it's also a society where wealth gives you free status levels. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, right? But it's still in the United States too. We don't see it, but it's still here too, right? Like we we think we think that it's a meritocracy. If you just make a lot of money, then of course you get status. But that's not, it's closer to true, but it's not 100% true. Um, I, I'm doing very well. Um, so back in the back in the day, and practically talk about this as well, like back in the back in the back in the day, like if you were a serf, like it would be very difficult for a serf to be able to pretend to be a noble because the education and the training, the dialects you use, the words you use, if you could read or not, there were all these things that made it virtually impossible to pretend to be a noble if you were not one and vice versa because you just like it's such a yeah the, the absolutely absolutely has dynasties and nuva is still a thing absolutely and you can just see it krellen with reality tv shows like all the housewives of the x and whatnot those are all nuva rich people and you can see that they may have money but they do not have the status that's going to get them into that big country club with all of our old money like they have they got a couple of levels of status for their wealth but they don't have the same they don't have the same status as like our old rich people. Yeah. Yes. And Trump, he's got wealth, but no status above what the wealth gives her free. Yes. And they want it. And that's one of the reasons why Trump is always so bitter is because he doesn't, he cannot get into the old blue blood circles because he doesn't have that level of status, right? He has money, but he doesn't have that. He has some status, but he doesn't have all the status, right? Wait, am I saying that nice isn't a historical documentary? Yes. Uh, it only counts for a great grandkids still have it. Mm -hmm. And so... What I think is interesting, and here, coming back around, is where actors, why one of the reasons why actors were so distrusted. Um, the reason why actors were so distrusted was because they could pretend to be nobles. Right? So we're talking about a time period where there are sumptuary laws, where if you, like, only certain classes of people could wear certain fabrics and colors, etc., which became more of a problem when middle class people got money up so they could afford those things. So like, no, if you're not a noble, you can't, you just can't wear this. You know what I mean? Like you can't have this. You can't like, we just made laws because they wanted to make sure you can make these distinctions just by looking at somebody, what class they were, because they believed, right? That, uh, they believed that status was an inborn trait, right? Like, I don't know if you know that, that there's that, that phrase, the blood will out, right? Uh, this idea that if you were a noble, just by virtue of being a noble, you would automatically beat a peasant in a fight. Now, oftentimes this is true because peasants are not trained in fighting, and you are. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, but that attitude continued on into like World War One, which is maybe not as relevant anymore. But the point being that you have this great chain of being, you have this social structure that tells you that status is something you can see just by looking at somebody or talking to somebody, and there's no way around it, none. You, it cannot be faked. You can always tell, right? You're born with it. Um, but actors, and Hawkeye's noticing, right, that actors and artists for a long time had the, had the upper crust as their patrons, so they were able allowed to mix in. Yes. Old money comes with a lot of status. It's very hard to break into, into that status for new money. Yeah. And here's the thing. It's also a compul this is also yes, Margaret, Margaret Kenner TV notes this is also a product of compulsory mass education, which changes a lot of things. And so those actors back in the day would often get, as Hawkeye was already that they had these upper crust patrons, and those upper crust patrons would often give the actors who they favored their clothing, like their used clothing, so they could uh, use them on stage. So you have these actors who for the most part are not upper class who learn how to mimic upper class behavior, customs, um, mannerisms, and then also wear the clothes of the upper class on stage. And they do it convincingly. And if you can have some random actor pretending to be queen, be, be the queen or the king, and do it convincingly, and part of your social structure is based on the idea that that is impossible because there is an important distinction between the classes that is not... The reason why you get treated like that is because you're you're this, and that's 
a natural thing. To have somebody who can pretend successfully to impersonate somebody outside of their class was very upsetting. And that was one of the reasons why people really didn't trust actors, because they really were a little bit of a destabilizing, they were a little bit destabilizing in terms of the ideology. Um, you know, if you know what I mean. To a certain extent, why they could be there, but they just didn't belong there yet. Try marrying into wealth as an artist, yeah. Time of Gist says, why can't the English teach their children how to speak? This verbal class distinction by now should be antique. Oh, yes. If you spoke as she does, sir, instead of, oh, my fair lady, absolutely. Um, Margaret says, even if composer magic education is a failed experiment, it did sort of take a valiant stab at closing the status quo. And it actually did. Like, I mean, I would rather live now than in 1300 as a serf. I'm just going to note that one, you know. Wandering in says, in the UK, if you go to boarding private school, you make connections, yes. And friends who later end up hiring and influential all over the place, absolutely. That's the closed circle, right? Hawkeye says, I've even felt that at professional meetings. I could tell which ones were at the upper level as opposed to the farm boy uh, who made good like me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Donald says, importantly, the belief that blood will out was not just belief among the nobles. Absolutely. The lower classes believed it as well because that's what the culture was, right? And if you think about... and Maybe you did or you didn't believe this, and I'm sure you did not believe this by the time you got to 1800, but maybe you did in 1100, I don't know. There was the idea that if you upset the great chain of being before the Enlightenment, right, it might cause, like, if there's a crop blight or an earthquake, it might be because the great chain of being is being disturbed, that people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, which actually, interestingly enough, is part of the premise of the RPG Clockwork Dominion, which I, which I really love. It's such a great game. Uh, and I hope to be doing another round of it in the summer when we get there over on Table Story. Um, and so actors are actors are scary, right? Because they they challenge this sort of belief system, this hierarchical structure that is supposed to be unchanging, right? And uh, and look, in some practical purposes, it's true that back in the day, especially back in the day when what a noble was was a person who was trained from birth to be a very good fighter, right? And had better food than everyone else and had training on how to ride horses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you were a serf that didn't get all those things, probably that noble could be unified nine times out of 10. You know what I mean? But, 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 but. Um, even Harry Potter had that classism. You have to be born with it. One of the reasons I've never been a fan. Mm -hmm. Also, one of the things that always kind of disturbed me a little bit about some of the ways that Star Wars went. But, um, side note, by the way, we are coming back to Millie Vanilli. Side note, um, there's a TV show called Faking It. It was a British reality show. I don't, I don't think it's around anymore. And in this British reality show, somebody would volunteer and they would, they would leave their life for a month and for for like basically the, the month they would train to do something else. And then at the end of the month, they would have to go through a test where they would try to basically pass themselves off as that thing and see if they could fool people. And they would do like, oh, I do something like, this guy's a... Um, you know, he, he runs a hot dog stand. He's going to try to pass himself off as a, a high-end chef. Um, this person is a sheep shearer. He has to pass himself off as a as a high-end hairdresser. This person's a house painter. He has to pass himself off as a conceptual artist. Uh, this woman's a, a Liverpool waitress. She's got to pass herself off as, like, minor nobility. This person's, like, a very rich, wealthy Oxford lad who has to pass himself off as a working-class bouncer in a East End pub. Like it was always, it, this was like the setup almost all the time. Uh, Trooper is time travel confirmed. How else we did all these things about the 11, I can't talk about the 1100s, so secret. So like it was always this kind of a thing. Interestingly enough, there's often an awful lot of, basically they didn't say, but there's an awful lot of class stuff going on in terms of what was going on with their, uh, with their experiments. My Fair Lady, the TV show. Yeah, basically, yes. Uh, and it, it wasn't only Lower class to upper class. Sometimes they do upper class to lower class, right? The Oxford student has to be like the East End bouncer um, or the classical musician who's got to be like an EDM DJ, that kind of a thing. Um, but what I thought was really fascinating about this show was that they would have like a team of people to train them. One person would train them on like the techniques. They might have one or two people to train them on the techniques. One person would give them a makeover. And one person always, always was the dialect coach from the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, because they're like, nobody will believe you with the way you talk. So even though it is now the 20th, 21st century, the ways in which your voice, at least in the UK, will tell a whole bunch about you, um, 
still is very much in effect, right? Like the the Liverpool barmaid who had to pass herself off as like aristocrat socialite sort of thing, they clocked her because of her accent. She just couldn't ditch the Liverpool. And they were like, well, they're like, okay, you just can't ditch this Liverpool. So maybe we can try to find some way to like soften or lighten your Liverpool to make it seem like you still have status. They just clocked her from her, they're like, nope. They just clocked her from her voice, just like that. You know what I mean? And, um, right? Uh, and it there was a lot, it was just a lot of, and like that guy who was a conceptual artist, he could have had his regular accent. I think he had like a, uh, a northern accent. He could have pit a conceptual artist with a northern accent, but like, no, nobody will believe you. Because uh, the way it goes at the end is that there's some kind of event, there's some kind of a thing that happens and uh, where there's like multiple people who are that thing. Uh, and th like like a, like there was like a, um, for the hairdresser, there was a, a, a hairdressing competition and they had like these five contestants, one of which was the person who was faking it. And then after the event was over, they said to the judges, hey judges, one of the people who were the contestants was faking it, wasn't really a hairdresser. Can you guess who it was? Um, or like with the East End, with the Oxford kid, it'd be the East End bouncer. They had like some big, big event at this pub, like, you know, like a soccer event or whatever. And they had like a bunch of new bouncers coming into staff that day. And at the end, they're like, hey, one of your new bouncers wasn't a real bouncer. You tell which one, right? And then people will sort of say, and the, you don't win money for this show. It's just, you, you're, you're hoping that you can basically fool enough people. And oftentimes the thing that fooled them were sometimes it was technique, but sometimes it was, sometimes it was just accent, right? You don't have the accent of the class that you're pretending to be. And that's it, right? Um, are there any P MPs that speak with a company accent? Ooh, kind of like, what's my line? Yeah. Hey, hey, Bufardi. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. Um, we're talking about class, but they only prompt them afterwards. Like after they say, hey, you did this whole event. One of those people was faking it. Can you tell us who it was, right? So afterwards. So this is what happens. So we have this idea, right, of like fakeness and discomfort with acting. Rewind. Eddie Murphy, he did not do very well in his musical career. And one of the things that I've noticed that I think is very interesting, because <laughs> they were faking it, well, it actually has to do with a uh, certain kind of distrust, right? So what I notice is that it's easier for singers to become actors and be accepted than actors to become singers and be accepted, even if they both have done both the entire time. And um, so Eddie Murphy, he had a perfectly fine voice he, and he had like two minor hits and everything, but people tend to want to think that singers are not acting, that they're just being true. They're just being honest. They're just singing their feelings, right? They're not faking it. We have an investment in thinking that singers are just telling the truth and that what we hear them sing is how they really feel. But we know that actors are liars. So, unless they're method, blah, blah, blah. So we're okay with a singer becoming an actor because we already believe that they're true and honest, but we tend to not like it as much when actors become singers because we know that singers are liars and then we're afraid they might be lying to us on stage when they're singing and we don't like that, right? Yeah, singers are supposed to be genuine. And so we often are very skeptical and are really hard and mock actors who become singers. Like, oh, you want to, like, uh, what's his face? Uh, the guy from House has a blues band. People make fun of them. Like whenever people do that, or like, what's his face? One of those pop punk bands actually, right? Was, uh, what's his face? Bradley Cooper's another, oh, Bradley Cooper's a great example as well, right? Like when Lady Gaga acts, we're like, oh, that's so amazing. When Bradley Cooper sings, we're like, oh, pff, what is that, right? There's this, and it's because of this weird idea we have that singers are always true and genuine, even though they're performing, right? But actors are somehow suspect. Uh, that can't be true because I've never heard a professional singer with a sob in their voice, right? Yeah. Uh, Praxis. I think that's an interesting Somebody's Western concept, though. Me. Absolutely. Uh, some of the least respected actors in C-dramas and K-dramas are the idols who go to acting. Yeah, yeah. And um, now I will note, oh, Bufardi, you just followed. I always feel that somebody's watching me. And I have no privacy. Oh, I always feel that somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Ba -da -ba -ba. Thank you for that follow. By the way, we're we're playing the long dark. We just, uh, you know, uh, we should probably bring up the game to as we finish this conversation. It's probably what we should do at this point in time. Um, 
Now, I will note, it is not necessarily easy for singers to be respected as actors because oftentimes Hollywood is not particularly welcoming of them, right? They like, I know that, um, oh, thank you, Bafardi. Thank you. Um, like, I know that Cher worked really hard to get that Oscar. Like, people in the Academy did not trust her because she was a singer. Uh, and it, so it's not easy for act, for singers to become actors and be accepted and be respected, but it's easier, right? It's it's not easy, but it's easier. There, I feel like there are more examples of successful singers becoming actors who get well-respected than actors who become singers who get well-respected. Uh, Madonna never really broke through. She tried. She tried hard, but that was hard. I will say this, though. A lot of times these distinctions are bogus because many of those actors have also been singing all the time, right? And many of those singers have also done acting. So it's not like these are hard and fast rules. Uh, like Bette Midler was doing acting too. Like, you know what I mean? Like a lot of them um, have done both. And actually I think about this when it comes to musical theater. Like I know people are like, oh, why did they cast Emma Stone and what's his face in La La Land. That's so terrible because they should actually, you know, have real actors, right? But, uh, oh, I'm not gonna eat that. But they probably also had singing experience. You know what I mean? Like, so I mean, a lot of acting is actors get multi, there's a lot of like cross training. Hey, Lic Lic Licinius Rex, how are you? Best followers, prime viewers, oh. You're a, you're, you're, you're a, you're a spammer. That's so sad. Kylie Minogue did all right in Street Fighter, but Kylie Minogue also started in acting, but I think people have forgotten that, right? You know what I mean? So I think there's something, uh, that is fascinating. By the way, this fire is, uh, uh, I cannot eat that food while we're here. So here's the thing about Millie Vanilli. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I do not have the time for this. Oh, you know what actually I do? I'm going to cook water, but in small amounts, because that doesn't take... I'm going to take this and then dump it somewhere. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. And also these things are a little bit... Um, I would also say that this kind of weirdness we have about singing and acting has, has just gotten more extreme post-rock and roll because rock and roll is in a number and idea of authenticity. So I mean, like that is a, uh, a thing. I am going to... Hey, this has calories. I'm gonna give it to our friends at this at the place. Moulin Rouge. Oh, Moulin Rouge is another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you have the game up? Uh, no. So now I'm gonna talk about Millie Vanilli. So the thing about Millie Vanilli, which I think is really interesting, is that um, one of the reasons why people got so freaked out by Millie Vanilli is that the people we watch singing were not actually singing, right? That was uh, not true. <laughs> um, they were lip syncing. And that is a problem because we want to imagine that what we see is 100% real. But what is fascinating to me is that this was not a problem um, in Europe. Right? In Europe, um, it was pretty standard to have people lip syncing dance music. Like that wasn't actually really a problem. Uh, I don't think, now the guys who were playing, the guys from Millie Vanilli were not told that they were not, that they were going to be, um, that they were not gonna be allowed to actually sing. They 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 were, they actually sang the songs and then they just swapped out their voices over the couple's voices and they didn't actually know that. So that was like sucky for them actually. Uh, sorry about that. Like. That's a bummer. Um, we want to find... We are headed up this way. We want to find this right here. Tall Tales. And there's there's going to be like a forest talker space somewhere. But I don't quite know where that is. But we are going to try to find that. That is a thing we're doing. We're, we're heading off north. Yeah, and also I just want to note about Millie Vanilli, they were 18, right? Like they were 18 when they signed that contract and one of them didn't even speak German and signed this contract in German. Uh, Rob didn't speak German 
Fab didn't speak German. Rob did because Rob uh, Rob was German. But like these are eighteen year olds who were basically exploited and screwed over pretty badly, right? So uh, there's that. Uh, Wandering says, you know, it's funny. I'm getting intense deja vu because I think the last time I was chilling with you here, you were playing the long dark. And ch I don't think I was ch chatting about Millie Vanilli yet because I feel like that's a, that, that's a new one. Another was Hugh Laurie. He was in music before he was uh, in, in Lauren Fry and eventually. Yes, that's right. Um, and so, but of course we end up, you know what? I'm a little, I'm a little encumbered. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little on the edge when it comes to encumbrance, but we are going to, uh, we're going to work through it slowly. Clearly, we're going to work through it in a slow way, but it'll be fine. We'll get there. Uh, uh, no, being fair, I think it was mentioned not deep dive. Yeah. So I was thinking about the ways in which the thing about Millie Vanilli is tricky, right? And it's like a philosophical thing. So I think they got the Grammy for best song, I think. They gave that the Grammy for best new artist. They might have gotten the Grammy for the song. Um, I'm not sure. I think you have mentioned Millie Vanilli before. So maybe. Um, so what's interesting to me about this is that the song is still the same, right? If you liked the song, if it was the song you liked, the song hasn't changed. You now know that Rob and Fab were not the ones singing it, but the song is still the same song. Unless, right, like, what does it mean for you to decide that the song is not the same anymore? Do you know what I mean? Um, I think it was a new artist. And I was also thinking about, like, so you know um, how Martha Wash was the voice of a lot of Eurodance? Um, Snap, uh, Black Box, a bunch of these Eurodance groups had Martha Wash as the voice. She was the voice of all of that stuff, right? And... Um, Everybody dance now. Bum, 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 bum. Give me the music. Like, that's Martha Wash. The video does not have Martha Wash. The video has a model. Like, a, a hot, slim model who is young and not Martha Wash. Which is pretty messed up. Um, I feel like that's pretty messed up if you want my opinion. Um, if you like the sound before you found out, and you aren't good enough to hear it yourself, then why does it bother you so much? Uh, hey, Boo Day, how are you? And so I think about the fact that when I found out that Martha Wash was the voice behind those songs, it didn't make me not like the songs anymore. I didn't feel, I'm not, I didn't feel like, oh no, that hot model isn't actually singing. I hate this song now. I thought, man, why did they screw over Martha Wash? She's amazing. They should have put her in the video because I like her. But like, I don't feel like the song doesn't count anymore. That, you, do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, the person shouldn't, sh well, shouldn't the award go to the person you heard, not the person you saw? Hey, hey, Boudet. And now so much pop music is auto-tuned. What's the real difference? But here's the thing about auto-tuned. Pop music has always been auto-tuned. It's just that they use different technology. It's not like artists in the past weren't fixed. They were. They always were. The minute you start going to recordings, things are always massaged. The question is, do you know it? Um... Everybody, and the thing about what so, so much, I mean, there's always been post-production, always, always. Um, and people will often say things like, yeah, I hate all that auto-tune stuff. I listen to stuff that doesn't have auto-tune, like Bruce Springsteen, who also has auto-tune. You know who uses auto-tune? Symphonies. If you listen to a recording of a symphony orchestra, they use auto-tune on that. They use auto-tune and sweetening on everything. That singer-songwriter with just them and their guitar, also, auto well, it's not auto-tune anymore. Now it's like Melodyne and Isot. It's, it's Melodyne. But the point is, all of it has been, has been uh, tuned up. All of it. No matter what, like, if you think your artist hasn't been, they have. And even before we had auto-tune, things were, were touched up in various, in various ways. Yeah, it's just, it's, and the thing is, it was part of the production pipeline then. You take a look, I mean, first off, they would do things like, you would sing the song multiple times, and maybe you were only able to hit that note once. So they just find that one note, they splice, like, there is like, they, you just splice those. I mean, I learned how to splice audio tape to make a performance that just did not happen, right? Like, if you cannot play, like, I, we took a, one of our, our final project for my, um, audio engineering class was we had a, a pianist 
who played a, a, a Beethoven piano sonata three times and messed up multiple times in each of the three versions. And our job was to stitch together a performance of that Beethoven piano sonata from beginning to end that sounds as if there'd never been any errors. And where they, you could not tell that I had stitched this together from three different pieces. Um, right? And so that performance that people listened to that I made did not happen. I stitched it together from a bunch of different versions uh, because that that was my job, that was my assignment. And so there are multiple artists who cannot reproduce what you hear on the record live, uh, which is fine, uh, but that has always been the case. Or they'll use, um, sometimes an artist like Fabian or whomever cannot hit certain notes and they'll just bring in somebody else to hit those notes and then they'll just splice it in. So like that kind of thing, it's it's a it's a different version of post-production auto-tune, but it's always been there. It has always been there as long as we've had recording. Well, as long as we've had tape recording, uh, you couldn't really do it when you're doing it direct to wax, but uh, people also had different standards back then as well. It was okay for people to sing with less precision than we want now. We want a kind of precision that is sometimes not particularly attainable, you know? Um, people, uh, very pretty snow, but I wonder if the music is telling us, the music is always telling us something. Well, speaking of, hold on a second, I just realized something. I need to do this. I need to open, I need to expand my chat so I can see more. Um, yes, so I can see more of the chat because chat sometimes goes by fast and I want to, you know, see it all. I don't want to miss the chat. Um, Carl, I still thought about your person. I haven't thought about that. Um, people just know what Autotune is. They run a compressor on just about everything too. Yeah, I mean, everything is compressed. I mean, gosh, yeah, yes. Everything is compressed and shifted. Uh, if you aren't listening to an acoustic instrument without a mic in person, it's auto-tuned. And if you're listening to it in auditorium, it's been tuned by the acoustics of the bloody venue. And also, Millie, they can now auto-tune you live. Like, just because you're watching somebody sing live, if they've got a mic and it's run through a board and it's a big production, they very well can be auto-tuned live as well. Not in a very obvious way, in a very subtle way, so you don't notice it. Uh, but, yeah. Probably. Um, I love metal. Dragon Force sounds incredible. They cannot actually play that intricately live. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, I don't think they're bad artists. By the way, we're going to go into the mountains. We probably... Once we get there, we're probably gonna have to like walk back out because I bet we cannot go from the mountain to the other side. I bet we'll be a cliff and we'll have to die. So we'll have to climb back out and down, but I don't care. I want to know what's up in there. So I'm excited to find out what's happening in our mountains. And uh, that's uh, that's going to be a thing that I am excited about doing, just for the record. Um, and microphones are filters, absolutely. Uh, and then there's the loop machine. Uh, I've never understood why people value live music over produced music. Uh, they're just different things, right? So that's, that was Carl who said that. Millie says, I mean, if you sing in the shower, it sounds better because of the acoustic of the bathrooms. You are tuning yourselves. Absolutely. Do you know, and if you go back, actually, Millie, thinking of that, speaking like to sort of yes and you, cathedrals were built with very specific acoustics in mind so that things would sound in very specific ways on purpose. And you would not sound that way if you were singing not in that, uh, in that cathedral. Um, they spent, there's a, a, acoustic engineers get, we have a, a, a hall and it's, it's so fascinating. So at the university where I teach, we have a building that's new by new, it's like 15, 15 years old, 15, 20 years old. And we have this uh, concert hall in there. And there was, A, they spent the, the most money that was spent in the building. The biggest expense was getting that concert hall built because we had to bring in an, an acoustical engineer from, from Italy to design the hall and tune it and make the hall that would work. And uh, the problem is, hey, Werewolf Fields, one of the problems is that um, a really good hall is not good for everything. And that was where there were debates. This is like old kind of debates. So what the people who had, what they what some people wanted was a, a, a hall that was tuned for string quartets, that you could play string quartets in um, and symphonic music. 
but a hall whose acoustics are tuned for that will be very, very bad for anything with lots of drumming. So jazz will be very bad for jazz, it'll be very bad for rock or pop, it'll be very bad for the African drumming ensemble that we have. So we have a, a bunch of world music ensembles and some like pop and jazz ensembles, and they can't really use the acoustical hall because the acoustics are too live or too hot. The acoustics are tuned. Oh, I don't No papers. No, none of that. No, uh, it's tuned for for classical music. Nothing amplified works in that hall at all. So all of those ensembles really cannot use that hall. They we ha they have a we have like a utility room that they use instead uh, because the acoustics don't sound good with that with that style of music or those instruments. Um, what they have done is they've spent more money to buy baffling to sort of basically dampen the acoustics so that those uh, those ensembles can play in our big hall. But it's our big, big hall. It's the biggest hall we have in the in the building, and it's the nicest hall. And for the longest time, just none of the non-classical music ensembles could effectively use it because they would just sound bad, right? Um, Tomika says, "Well, to be fair, the performance happened with irregular and some of those longer backwards intervals." Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have a I have vocal chain hardware on my mic, compresses and filters in real time. Yep. Um, hey, werewolf. Make a glass ceiling. I forget who has it, but they can move the glass ceiling for the sound. Yeah, but that is super expensive. We did, and also, you know what's really interesting, Margaret Ketter TV, about the glass ceiling? My undergraduate institution had a skylight, has a, has a, a their, um, my undergraduate institution's from the 1850s. In the 30s, during the, like, WPA, they built this beautiful um, concert hall, and the concert hall had a skylight, right? It had a glass ceiling that could be covered, but they basically, ooh, look at this. I have not been here before, my friends. Well, isn't this interesting? At least I don't think I've been here before. Maybe I have been here before. Have I been here before? I don't think I have. I'm gonna save. I'm afraid there's gonna be a bear that's gonna kill me. I just- Somebody's watching me. I always feel that somebody's watching me and I have no privacy. Whoa, I always feel that somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Ba -da -ba -ba. Thank you, Smokey Vivs. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so I really like Pink's live performances. I never really thought about how much could be auto-tuned. You have me wondering now. Um, so, <laughs> nice save. So the thing about um, this beautiful hall from the 30s, which is gorgeous with these amazing acoustics, with this big glass ceiling that, I never saw the glass ceiling open. I never saw the lights through the glass ceiling. They always had it covered. Uh, one of the reasons was, well, you wanna know what we have now that we did not have so much in the 1930s when they built that beautiful glass ceiling? Lots of airplanes flying overhead. The noise pollution now is so much higher that some of these beautiful acoustic things just don't work as much anymore, right? So that was this, I think they actually spent a lot of money to renovate it to try to actually soundproof it in a better way. I, I think they have, I think they did that. So that was like a, a thing. Let's eat, uh, let's eat some of this venison while we're here. Um, and then drink some water also while we're here just a little bit of that and so i kind of did you hear anything weird okay so i think about the ways in which um i think about the ways in which just the the acoustic sound space that we're in has changed so much um which goes back to Milli vanilli but not Milli vanilli is a different situation but i will say this people will be like oh that singer is lip-syncing they're fake and they're phony ba -ba 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 -ba. Sometimes you have to lip sync. Specifically, um, many of the people who perform at the Olympics have to lip sync. Or uh, some of the big sporting events where they're in a, a sporting arena, not a concert venue, oftentimes they have to lip sync because the delay is so long in those arenas that if they were not lip syncing, if they were singing live, they would be off by a half a second or a second, depending on how big the venue is, because the delay between when they hear the sound and when they sing it is actually large enough that it actually would just be off. And so sometimes, even though these performers could sing it live, um, oftentimes they're like, just don't, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a problem if you do, so just don't. 
And I thought that was really interesting. That sometimes it's actually just uh, the space of the acoustics. Yeah. Um, yeah, even even yeah, even with the earpiece, because there's just the delay. And I have not been here. Yeah, the Super Bowl does it. Sometimes people will insist that they that they do it live at the Super Bowl, but they really shouldn't, just because of the um, of the delay. Like it's just that's just acoustics, right? Um, so you know, trying to be kind. But I was also thinking about. Krellen was saying that he doesn't know why people valorize live performance over the recorded so much. And I was thinking about a couple of things about that. I wanted to yes and Krellen there for a moment. And one of the things I wanted to yes and was, what I wonder what's in here. This is very interesting. We're looking for a door, by the way. Is um, there are some things that cannot be done live, right? Like they, they actually cannot be done live. And I'm thinking about, for example, Enya. Oh, there's an entrance. Uh, light and sound travel at vastly different speeds. Yep. Enya does did everything in her albums herself. All of that stuff she did was a lot of multi-tracking of her own voice. She did everything herself. And basically what she created was not doable live. She could not do what she did in the studio live. And some people use the studio as an instrument. Right? It's not like the studio is fake and the live is real. It's that the studio can be its own instrument. And she was using the studio as an instrument that she could not reproduce live if she'd have to radically do something very, very different. Uh, some people I'll take it. are, oh, hey, some people are, have, cannot perform live. They, that is not where they're, it's too scary for them. They have anxiety. They cannot perform live, but they can perform in a studio. Um, some people can perform live, but cannot perform in a studio. Uh, that has that is sometimes a big problem um, as well. <laughs> clone any if you cloned any that would that would work it. Um, um, hey, you know what? I cannot open this door. I would like to though. Well, it looks like they're not going to let me. Well, phooey, my friends. You know what that means. Uh, I'm gonna drop this pry bar here. I would, I would like to, um, I would like to break open this door. Fine, fine. I won't. I won't. I won't. I'll just drop this here. Come back to it later. Uh, the Doze Queen dot Kong is an entirely different song live than recorded because there are just too many effects in the recorded version. Yeah, and that's like not bad or fake. Do you know what I mean? Like I I do not believe in any way that using the studio as an instrument makes you less real. I don't think that at all. I just think it's a different it's just a different experience. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just different, and that's okay. And actually, it's kind of cool. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I think it's kind of cool that you prepared for anything. Ooh. I can take it. Uh, I'm taking all the things. And now I'm over encumbered, which means I'm going to put some of these things back that I don't need right now. Uh, so I just want you to know that I'm picking up all the stuff, but I, this seems like a really great place. Like it seems like a, hey, what is this? It's a hacksaw. Oh, uh, lucky day. I will take this as well. I can no longer move, so we'll put stuff back here. This is what we're going to do. Because uh, I actually don't need all this stuff now, and I'm sure I'll come back to it, but I want to figure out what I can take and what I can leave, you know? Let's see. What can I take? What can I leave? Where's my... um? Where is my... I have a lantern. Where is my lantern? Oh, here we go. Uh, this is weird. There we go. Okay, lantern, 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 lantern. I need to actually get out of this and just check the lantern itself. Let's see what we can do here. Hello, lantern. Can I refuel? Apparently I'm all fueled up, so that's great. 
Uh, let's see if there's... There's a lot of good stuff in here, but I've got too much stuff and I've got to figure out um, what I want to dump. I'm a little bit worried about my hatchet. I would like to have more hatchet time. Um, I don't like the live version. Oh, I only know the band exists because of their recorded version appears in one of the Saints Row games. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'm going to give the ruined peaches to the people in the town hall because the town hall needs... Uh, we're going to drop these things off. The town hall needs food. You know what I mean? So I'm going to drop that off. But we're going to see what else we might be able to drop off. Uh, we're going to drop off this hacksaw. And we're going to... I really wish I could consolidate some of that stuff into one thing, but uh, we will do that. And feel like I feel like we're probably good. I feel like we can probably leave it at that. We're down to 64 and we will lose more weight as we move forward. So I feel like I can probably just keep moving here. Yes. Um, you need a hatchet. What happens if you were to plank? Right? I know. See, now I'm moving again. Also, look at this great fire barrel. I wish I could... Like this has been here a while. We're going to take this and this and this. We're just taking all those things, everybody. That's what's happening. Yeah, I need a I need a whetstone, and I do not have a whetstone, and it distresses me that I do not have one. But this looks like a place that we're going to have to come back to later, which is fine. Um, I also think about the fact that the Beatles stopped touring because they did not enjoy the experience of playing live anymore. Because like we can't hear each, we can't hear ourselves anymore. We do not like this. We'd rather just stay in the studio and just record things in the studio. We don't we don't want to perform live anymore. That didn't make them less real. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that there's a... And actually, you know, recording well in the studio is not particularly easy. Um, there are challenges to that. As, by the way, I'm walking towards a cliff, which I shouldn't do, but I just want to know what's out here. So it's, it's a thing that I want to know. I just want to know, is there a way down off of this mountain also, what time is it? Uh, this direction without dying? Or is there not? These are questions that I have, and I don't know the answer, but I'm curious. Um, but it did make them break up, because when Paul says they go back live, it's true, actually, right? Because, uh, yeah, they they just, they, they really did not enjoy playing live. They kind of, they but then they people got nostalgic and they kind of wanted to, but it basically, yeah, it was, there are a bunch of things that broke up the Beatles. One of them was they lost their manager that was keeping them together, right? Like Brian, when Brian Epstein died, that died, that was like the beginning of the end for the Beatles. So here's the thing. I feel like maybe I can climb down this mountain this direction. Uh, should I climb down the mountain this direction? Probably not. But am I going to try to climb down the mountain this direction? Yes. Yes, I am. Should I especially not try to do this because I am mega over encumbered? Absolutely, yes, again. Am I going to do this anyway? Yes, I am. But am I going to drink. F Wait. Oh, why do I have so few fluids, everyone? I don't have that much. I don't. What is this? Hold on, everybody. What is this? I have a bunch of unsafe water. Okay. Change of plans, everyone. Change of plans. Change of plans. Um. So it turns out that I don't have a whole lot of... You know what? No change of plans. We're just going to save and go. We're going to... 
try to go down the mountain. But I think of the higher scores you will get for... T yeah, right? Yes. Disaster averted by bad waters. But you know what? I feel like I might have enough. Okay, this is going to be a disaster. I just saved. This is going to be probably very bad. But... We're going to try it. We're going to see if we can get down this mountain. This direction. The answer is probably going to be no. I'm probably making very poor choices right now. But... Gotta experiment. Uh, mm -hmm. She'll be rolling down the mountain when she comes. It's like maybe I can... like make. Look, I just want to look over the edge and see if there's a... Ooh. Mm. Y'all. I don't know if we can make it down that way. Uh, it's questionable. It is questionable. We're gonna try. This is really bad. This is... This is bad. Um, but uh, we're going to see... Uh, we're gonna see what we can see. Uh, Boudet says, Oh, I have a fun Beatles story via Motorhead from Lemmy, frontman Lemmy, uh, Killmeister. While they were still performing at the cavern, someone in the audience yelled something repugnant about Brian Epstein. John jumped down off the stage and bopped the guy and said, Anyone else? Good. And back in the kitchen kept going, Yep. Brian Epstein was really important for them. Like, I, people do not uh, appreciate how important Brian Epstein was in making them the Beatles and then keeping them the Beatles. Um, Okay, y'all, bad choice is happening. Um, oh, there is falling damage. If I fall and die, then I, I mean, I can easily die, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm hoping that we can make our way down here without dying. I do not know if that is possible, but I'm trying to be very, very careful. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me about this. Uh, uh, we're going to... Um, just we just have to make it to this ledge if we can make it to this ledge i think we'll be okay oh, oh ah this i gotta tell you the sound design is very very distressing Whew. uh oh. okay we're gonna bandage ourselves uh yeah we're gonna bandage ourselves we will bandage we'll bandage uh bandage ourselves a little bit just a little bit right now uh, we saved right before we started climbing down here. So, uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, he was responsible for their mod look. He also kept them from fighting because they, they got into a lot of arguments. You know what I mean? Like they had some, they had some stuff going on and, uh, he kept them together. And when, and he, and also they didn't really know business very well. And he also kept their business part of themselves together. They, uh, we're not, uh, he really did a lot to keep them together is, is all I'm trying to say. Uh, they would not have been as successful as themselves had it not been for him. And when he died, that really somebody's was the, watching basically me. the beginning of the end. I always feel that somebody's watching me and I have no privacy. Whoa, I always feel that somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Uh, thank you for that follow, Dementio Den. Thank you very. And so I arrive, like a like news of a finger snap, wiping out half of Marvel up, open uh, upon an unsuspecting internet. Welcome in, Dementio Den. I appreciate the dramatic entrance. I, I appreciate that very much. Um... Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna, yeah. She needs a Nordic all-terrain horse. I do. This is, that is true. That is what she needs. Let's, okay, so we are technically, I, ooh. look, we might be able to get down the mountain. This is a bit of a drop. Uh, mm. I am Count Blex, Master of Dimensions, the pleaser of crowds. I am Dementio. Remember the name well. I, feel like I did not do justice to your entrance. I feel like I should have used much more dramatic language. I'm sorry. I feel like I should have, you know, 
I feel like I should have said it like, and so I arrive, like news of a finger snap wiping out half of Marvel upon an unsuspecting internet. I am Count Blex, Master of Dimensions, the pleaser of crowds. I am Dementio. Remember the name well. See, I feel like that is more befitting. Ooh, hey, we didn't die, didn't break anything. Y'all, I think we climbed down the other side of the mountain, and if we are lucky, we will not break anything else on the way down. Also, I feel like we, I wanted to go through the other side completely, but oh well, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I wanted to see if I could just go... Did y'all used to climb? I used to climb all the time. I was one of those kids that climbed everything all the time. That was me. I was like a... I climbed everything all the time. When I lived in the mountains... Oh, hey, look. There are uh, power lines. When I lived in the mountains, I would climb up trees. When I lived in the city, I would climb over fences and backyards and along fences. I just... I was climbing all the time. I was one of those kids. There are big rocks in the woods around my house. Yes. The big question is, where's the key to the building? That is a good question, and I do not... <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> I hope uh, I will find that... That key. That is my hope. Also, we are going to actually go in and find the medication in, on, in person, because uh, we have some medication here that's only like 19 percent you know use it yeah 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 also for the record we are we are gonna we're gonna need to find a place where we can finish that water and also um yeah we gotta finish that water is what i'm trying to say and sleep you know what i mean um she's made of bandages maybe was fun the three days out of the year my allergies weren't terrible Ooh. Ooh. Also, we're getting a lot of wind, but it doesn't seem to be that cold. And also, I don't think we've ever been here before. Which is... Hey, look! Hey, look! There's a rope! We could have probably rappelled down. Except that we're too encumbered to rappel. I don't think you can rappel down if you have any encumbrance at all, so... We did it the better way. Anyhow, um... To go back to something that, back to Millie Vanilli, something that Krellen said, shouldn't the people who sang the song have gotten the Grammy? And that is such a good question. My first instinct is to say yes. But then I have other questions, though. And I think the questions I have is, you know, when a film gets best picture, it goes to the producer. And when a song wins... Like, best song, it doesn't go to the performer, it goes to the songwriter. And there are a bunch of people who make a song who don't get to go up there and pick up the award, even though they're important part of making the song, and sometimes they don't even count as authors. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I'm, it's like, this is like a, a weird thought. It's like a philosophical thought about, like, who counts as the people who make a song. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's a... I'm not defending Millie Vanilli exactly. That's not exactly what I'm doing. I'm more sort of musing about what counts as authorship. Uh, there's a building over there. I think we should visit it. Also, there's a bunch of wood here, which seems pretty awesome. And we are... This is... What is this? This is uh, Molly's Barn, which I think is pretty good. We are not going to save this person at this moment because uh, we're going to go up here first. Just for the record. Also, I really, really, really want to get into that building on that mountain. Um, so, I've been thinking about... I think about this a lot, because we were talking about this in the Soul class. Um, about ownership and credit, right? And copyright. And because what counts as authorship under our system is pretty narrow... A bunch of people that I think of as being authors of songs don't get to count as authors of songs because what we count is narrow, right? So, for example, almost all those Beatles songs, Krellen says, if it was the best video, I could see how Fab and Rob could be the winners. Yeah, I think that's fair. But they weren't involved in the creation of the recorded song. I think that's also fair. Yes. Um, the tricky thing is that they, they got the Grammy for Best New Artist. They gave it back, by the way. 
Um, they got the Grammy for Best New Artist. And I'm not quite certain who Brown is, who the artist is. Do you know what I mean? In this, in this instance, how close are we to the town? Oh, we're, we're quite far away. Okay. I, I'm not certain who the artist is, is what I would say. But I get it. I, I get why they put the, why, why they gave the Grammy back. I get it. I'm actually not scandalized by that too much. Um, I really want brownies now, everybody. Yeah. But I don't... I don't know who counts as the artist right in that moment. I'm actually a little bit uncertain wh who the artist is in this situation. Oh yeah, it was it was the best move for them to to give that Grammy back 100%. 100%. I think that was probably a a, a good move. Um, also, oh, hey, we've been here before. This is where our, our murder friend, uh, this is our murder friend's barn. You know, our murder friend. We're back where we started. This is where we woke up. Well, not here. This is the, the barn of our murder friend. But you know what I mean. Also, it is getting cold which means I bet it is getting nighttime. Yes, it is. And also, I'm super wet. So we're going to go to the barn, start up a fire, take off our clothes, let our clothes dry out, you know, eat. You know, we're, we're going we're gonna to take care of ourselves and head out to find what's up there in the morning. I think we'll be fine. I think it'll be good. Um, also, we have a giveaway, by the way, everybody. I just want you, we have a giveaway, so if you want to be up for the giveaway, we're going to do uh, Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse, uh, the zombie game. And if you want to be eligible, just make sure you say something in the next five minutes, and when we get into the barn and, uh, you know, settle in, we'll do the winner. I don't think she's your murder friend, Trooper. A murder friend is a friend you murder with, not a friend who murders. That's true. You're right. You're right. No, that's true. I, I take it. I take it. And I accept it. Uh, a murdering friend. Yes, yes. That's more. She's a murdering friend. Yes. Uh, so about authorship. All those Speedle songs are written by Lennon and McCartney. But Lennon and McCartney did not write the drum parts or the, the guitar solos. But George and Ringo have no authorship in those songs because we do not count those things as the song. We also don't count the bass line as the song. It's and and it's part of the arrangement, but they don't count as the arrangers either. So I think about the ways in which they made those parts of those songs, but they don't get to be authors of those songs. Only Lennon and McCartney do, and I I just don't think that's fair. You know? Um Boudet says, on this subject, I just now learned that the keyboarders from Radiohead couldn't play when he joined the band. Oh, interesting. He turned his keyboard off during the performances and hurriedly learned to play in between. Oh, that's so interesting. Uh, I'm not quite sure she counts as a friend, says Rissa. Maybe a, 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 a murderous acquaintance, perhaps. Uh, hello, Radio Mylar. I love this game. Also, you've got some kahuna streaming on a Mac. Yeah, this is me doing my, you know what I mean? I'll tell you what, I'm dangerous. I live on the edge. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like a rebel. <laughs> I also like to make fun of, like to make fun of myself slightly. You know what I mean? I don't take myself too seriously. Um, Karan says, except when we do count the baseline, looking at, yes, looking at you under pressure versus ice ice baby. But I think, I actually think that that wasn't about, um, the copyright of the song, I think, was actually about the recording. Because recordings also have copyrights. Um, and they used the recording. So they're like, so there, there are moments where, but again, I don't think the person who played the bass actually get, gets ownership of that bass line. There's some, there's weirdnesses about that. I'm a Mac guy, I can't make too much fun of you. What's your setup? So I, this is, um, 
uh, this is it's it's interesting radio because I got a so I started um I was streaming for a while and I was on an iMac and um I am going to start this fire by the way uh, I was on an iMac and um let's do this and I started streaming um, I was gonna go and start streaming RPGs and so I was streaming RPGs like all that good stuff uh, that was um. That was Night Witches over on Geekspace TV. I'd streamed Cthulhu Confidential first, and that went well. Uh, there was like no problems with that. And but when I was start like the, when I started streaming, um, ooh, a hatchet, people! It's a hatchet, and it is a better. It's probably a hatchet that oh, is use this. in much better shape than my current hatchet. So we're gonna take it. And we're gonna drop off our old hatchet. We're just I'm just gonna let you know it. This is a, a thing we got going on now. Um let us drop our clothes off. So that they can uh warm up while just while we're here. There we go. Um uh, so I went and can can we see inventory? Oh, oh, I am very, very over encumbered. Radio, I suppose I should tell you something about um how I play the game inappropriately. Um, I, uh, you know, uh, uh, I sometimes, and by sometimes I mean almost all the time, am over encumbered. Because I just got a lot of stuff and I don't want to drop it. I just want to have it. And so I sometimes break ankles and, uh, sometimes it's a problem the over encumbrance that happens because sometimes it's a lot of over encumbrance it's like not a little it's a lot and i don't you know i um oops uh <laughs> um do i feel bad about it Kind of, you know, more or less. I mostly feel bad. About, I mean, I don't know how. I don't feel all that bad about it, but you know, you know. Um, I love under pressure. Uh, sort of like how Mona Lisa is in the public domain, but the photos are the property of the photographer. Yes, yeah. Um, and let me pass the time here. Let me just uh, take this, and then let me just cook some of these rose hip teas. Uh, and then pass the time until that's ready. Pick it. And I feel like I can probably just uh, pick that up. And uh, we'll pass the time until that's ready. And then we will take it. And then we have done a good job with our life. And then I feel like we can go to sleep. Um, yes, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go to sleep and then we can talk about the, the setup. Where 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 are we doing? We are here. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, I wonder if I can even... Uh... Well, I can't sleep. You know what, I probably... Mm -mm. um, we might... There oh, hold on, hold on. We almost had it. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh. We'll find it. We'll find it. Oh, do you see? Wait, wait. Uh, uh, eh. There. Sorry. That was a... I had to find, the, find that spot. Um, the video of Vanilla trying to explain the difference in the interview is pretty funny. It is. It is funny. Am I a digital hoarder? I am. I am. Radio Marlar. I am a digital hoarder. It's it's really bad. Uh, it, it is. It is. It is. It's, it's bad. Uh, also, hold on. Why did I wake up? Hey, why do you think I woke up? I feel like I probably woke up because I don't think I, I wonder why I woke up. I'm suspicious. Maybe I just, uh, maybe because I'm dying of thirst, it is possible, but 
you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you just get thirsty. Like, what are you supposed to do about it? Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, but actually, look, I'm not that encumbered. Note the reason why I'm saying that is because I took off most of my clothes. And so really, I actually am very encumbered. But... Uh, let's get one of our... Here's a torch. We don't have a lot of uh, time left on this torch, but it'll be good enough. Hey. <laughs> Oof. Hello. Where's all my clothing? Great. We're putting all our clothes back on. I hope. This is going to run out so bad. Um, and it's done, which is fine because now we break it down and I feel like I'm being responsible. See, like, see how great how, how that is. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a hoarder. I am. Um, I, I, some, I do. Sometimes I put down an extra crowbar. I really do. Uh, that does, I need a, I need a whetstone, I feel, but also I'm only at 61k, I'm only like 20k over my weight limit, which is really good for me, I mean, I should be under 60, like if I were like 50 something, that probably would be better, but I feel like I'm doing so well, and nobody appreciates how well I'm doing, speaking of, hey, do you think there's a, a workbench in here, because if there's a workbench in here, then uh, that's probably really good, right? Like we could, uh, let's see, this is a 25. Let's light this, shall we? Um, can we still move? If we can still move, does it really count as over encumbered? This is a question I have. He's the happiest when he's over encumbered to the point he cannot move and then just drops it enough that he can move again. I I so said this game is broken in its survivability factor. Like, who the hell wakes up every morning at 3 a.m. dying of thirst because I haven't drank more than passwords? This is a true point. This is a true... This is this is a true point. So, did we not... Were we not successful? Uh, there we go. Yeah, like, I feel like I'm not gonna... I feel like I'm not gonna die just because I slept for a couple of hours. That seems a little excessive. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just seems a tad excessive. But... You know, speaking of which, I really want to pick up the cedar firewood. Well, this stuff will come in handy. I'm gonna take it. I do understand that that just is adding to my encumbrance, but uh, also, do you think there's a, a a workbench in here? That would. Be oh, hey, look! It's one of the wolves that I I killed. How are you doing, wolf? Oh, I don't think I killed it. I think, actually, I think Molly killed this wolf with her wolf-killing nature. Cool. Uh, when do I want to stop for today? Oh, hey, I forgot. Y'all, I was going to do a giveaway, and I'm going to save. Yes, I'm doing a giveaway. We're doing the giveaway for uh, Stubbs the Zombie, Rebel Without a Pulse. I almost forgot. Hey, Aramiscare, how are you? Speaking of which, I think I need to do this. No, no. No. Oops, uh, I just dropped something. No, what What did I drop? I, oh, cannot drop my quality tools. None of that, none of that. We're going to go here. Because uh, I think if I go here, I can pick up my my uh, cursor. Margaret, I'm dying. Uh, there was no room at the barn, I, I know. I, so why would, I don't, I feel like I should just not die of thirst. It just feels rude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ramascara says, hey, what's up? Do you want a magic trick? I do want a magic trick. Uh, Ramascara, I would love a magic trick. That would be awesome. Yes, please. Absolutely. Uh, you've got two hatchets, a rifle, a handgun, a bow and arrow. What if I need them? Sometimes I run out of bullets. Uh, radio, the answer is... <laughs> uh, fire the flare and find out... I, I, uh, let's see. If you At least I died my... That's true. I'm, I should give away my mini torches, but what if I need them? Uh... <laughs> Yes, we have an entire... I used to have two tool two toolboxes, but I got rid of one. I feel like I'm doing much better. Um, well, I need the toolbox to fix things. Uh, it's so hot in your apartment. Oh, uh, okay. The winner of Stubbs the Zombie, Rebel Without a Pulse is... Nightbot? Who is it? <laughs> Radio Mylar. Radio Mylar. Hey, 
you have won Stubbs the Zombie. Rebel Without a Pulse. Wait, wait. Radio Marlot, you're in a Mac, right? You're in a Mac. Yes, yes. Um, Radio, uh, you're on a Mac. You cannot play Stubbs the Zombie. Hold on. I got you. Radio Mylar, I got you. Give me a second. It's it's not going to be Stubbs the Zombie. Give me a second. It'll be something different because you are my good Mac friend. Give me a second. Give me a second. So as we were speaking, so I got a I got an iMac Pro is what I got to answer the question. I got an iMac Pro because the iMac Pro... Oh, I didn't tell you why. So I was streaming, uh, I streamed, um, I had streamed, what was it? I had streamed um, Cthulhu Confidential. Somebody's watching me. I always feel that somebody's watching me and I have no privacy. Whoa, I always feel that somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Pow! Thank you for that follow, Radio Mylar. Radio Mylar. You're not going to get Stub the Zombie because that is not Mac compatible. But I'm going to give you something else. But you just have to give me a second. I have to log in so I can get the right thing and then I can do it. So I'm going to just wait what it's, uh, for this to show up and then I'm going to give you something cool. I'm going to give you a, a, a Steam code for a game and it's going to be really cool and it's going to make me happy. You just have to wait a second for my uh email code to come in that's all that's it uh <laughs> I, I keep saying i'm gonna buy a mac mini but i'm too poor to actually and to actually need it yet for work mm. so so this is what happened right so i was i was uh i streamed cthulhu confidential that went fine and then i went and i started streaming night witches and i was the first episode of night witches if you watch it on uh youtube there's all this video stuttering the audio is fine, but there's a lot of video stuttering. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, I was trying to figure out what was happening. I thought that maybe my computer wasn't beefy enough because it was an iMac that was a little bit older. So I got an iMac Pro, which is, I think they only came out with them for one year. I think they only, they didn't have them very long. So I've got this iMac Pro. And I was like, iMac Pro, let's go. We got it. And there were still problems. And then I figured out what the problem was. The problem was not that my old computer wasn't beefy enough, which I still use uh, at work. The problem was I was doing uh, screen captures of the screen, the, the the Mac screen, but the Mac screen is like a 4K or a 5K, and that is way too much data. So it was basically overloading my VRAM because uh, the, the quality was just too high. So what I did instead was I just bought two external monitors. They're 1080p. So I have, a, I have this monitor here, which is the iMac Pro. Then I've got two 1080p cheap, cheap, cheap Vizio monitors that are only 1080, so that when I'm streaming an RPG, I just put the zoom on the 1080 monitor so I can do the screen captures and it will not cause problems. Basically, that's the deal. So um, I had to do that. So I'm on the Mac, I'm on the, I'm on the iMac Pro, um, which and it's got like good RAM it's doing its business. It's a good thing. It's, you know, like I'm, I'm happy with it. I can probably use this for quite some time in the future. I, t uh, yeah. And uh, I can usually play you know what? I have an idea. Give me a second. They sometimes, I'm going to do this. Uh, there may be a slight hit in my, um, we're talking about hoarding, right? There might be a, we'll see if there's a, a quality hit. Hopefully there won't be, but there might be, because I'm going to pull up my other browser. Uh, and that browser has a lot more tabs than my I sometimes have like a couple hundred tabs open is what I'm trying to say. And I also have four browsers and each of those browsers have a bunch of tabs open. And I tr I'm trying to make it so that like one browser has all of my academic tabs, another browser has all of my gaming tabs, and then a the third browser is the, is the browser that I use when I have to because the people I'm playing with use clean feed. Uh, you know, I'm trying to do it that way, but... Uh, I look, I have closed quite a lot of tabs. I really have. I did a, I did a good job of closing tabs. You don't believe me. Prax, you know, it's true. Ooh, ooh, 
Ooh, I closed a couple of tabs, but maybe I need to close some more, but I did close some. <laughs> Look, these things tickle, tickle, they, they tickle me. They really, really do. Give me a second. I'm going to actually pull this up and then, uh, then it'll be lovely. Um, and then I'm going to radio my alarm and give you something really awesome. Um, am I using stream alerts? No, I'm not actually. I'm just using regular OBS. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, probably like 9.15, 9.20. It's about when I started. So right around then. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Margaret said, hold on. For, for fuck's sakes, I have no idea why. But for the last like two hours, there have been people outside my window chanting fucking USA, screaming and blowing their horns. Probably wants to go look, but now, but I know if I'm going to hit. Oh, was there some kind of game or something tonight? Like some sort of a. Uh, oh, Hawkeye should be hosting XU. Right? Yes. Um, stream. Yeah, I'm using OBS. Rarely are Max powerful up to encode and stream. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just using regular OBS. This has got it, like, and look, I got to tell you, um, Radio Mylar, I do some heavy work on, uh, like, I stream RPGs, so it's got, like, game, OBS, this, or multiple window captures, like, multiple window captures for, like, four or five players, plus, like, a lot, like, I have a lot of stuff, and most of the time it's actually totally fine. Um, I have to watch out for the fact that I have too many tabs open on some of my browsers. So I have a browser with no tabs open, but it's not, but Roll20 does not support it, which is a tad irritating. But once I slim down those tabs and get them all taken care of, then I feel like things will be much in a much better space is, is all I'm, I'm saying. I feel like, uh, Ooh, okay. Um, th th there you go. Uh, how many new ones did I open? Some, uh, I did do a bad job of answering the question. Uh, so I have 55, 54 tabs on my phone. I understand this, Margaret Kept. I understand this. Hey, if I, it was still available, Trooper would still be drinking a tab instead of Dr. Pepper. I would. That's fair. Uh, was it a, I feel like, no, not fuck the user. They're, 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 they're fucking chanting. See, I feel like it must be some kind of sporting thing, right? Yes. Yes, it is you, Hawkeye. World Cup, maybe? Fun fact, I live by both a federal prison and a VA office. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Oh, and LPD main office, but not precinct. Hey, uh, Margaret Catter, what neighborhood do you live in? I lived in Mar Vista when I lived in LA, across the street from Culper City. I lived on Washington Boulevard, and my side of the street was Mar Vista, Los Angeles. The other side of the street was uh, Culper City. Um, yes. Oh, I absolutely. Um, Trooper, I have to say, your pink chops often look like a glow of highlight on both sides of your cheeks. Thanks. Okay. You know where Union Station is? Yes, I do. Oh, oh, that's cool. Okay, Radio Mylar, this is what you have gotten. Are you ready? I'm going to send you a gift link for the game. ADOM, Ancient Domains of Mystery, which is an indie adventure RPG with strategy elements that has very positive reviews. And I am going to send you that. I'm going to send you a whisper right now with the link so you can get your Steam key for that. And I feel like you are cool and you might enjoy a nice indie adventure RPG with strategy elements. And that, and it is Mac compatible. Ta -da, ta -da. Um, and now I'm gonna just say that my day has been made just for the record. And now I'm going to quit out of Safari where I have way too many tabs and get back into Firefox where I have fewer tabs, but still many tabs, uh, many, many tabs, like some. Mm hmm. Um, so yes, you're welcome. Radio Mylar. Yay. RPGs. Thank you. It almost one of the bigger roguelikes that's actually roguelike. Oh, that's cool. Oh, neat. Nice. 
it's the triangle of Little Tokyo, Chinatown, the Arts District. Yeah, 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 I know where you, yeah. So yeah, and I lived, you know where I lived. Um, there was a thing that was amusing. Speaking of, I feel like, by the way, there may be a, um, a workbench up here. And I do want to check because if there's a workbench, we can actually get um, some of, we can make those rabbit, rabbit snares and maybe fix some stuff, which will then mean we have fewer things that we're carrying and it'll lower our encumbrance and everything will be great. Right? I mean, I'm just trying to be practical here. Uh, um, let us harvest that. It'll be, it'll be fine. Oh, about my mustache. So um, there's more than one answer to that question. But what I would say is, generally speaking, um, I have wanted a handlebar mustache for a very long time. Uh, who doesn't love a good handlebar mustache? Uh, and I have one, but, ooh, that looks so much better. But um, last weekend, I was a guest, I was doing a, a guest spot on a one shot over at uh, Roll For It. Uh, and it was Nerdburger Craig's new RPG staged heroism, which is like a, you know, a superhero game. And is there indeed a workbench up here? This is a question I'm not 100% sure. I thought there was one over there, but it doesn't look like it. In which case, we are not making rabbit snares. Bummer. Ah, oh well, it's life. Um, and so, in, in for that one shot, we decided we were all going to be a member of like a K-pop band. Uh, and so I was like, if I'm going to be a member of a K-pop band, I need pink hair. But if I'm going to have pink hair, I should probably also um, dye my facial hair. So I did. And that was, that's the story of my facial hair. And now my facial hair is all dyed pink. And I kind of love it. I, I kind of think it's awesome. I've dyed my hair blue and purple so far. Uh, this is the first time I've dyed it pink. I did a lot of blue, uh, and this is really... I did a lot of blue. I did purple once, and this is now pink once. And I, and I do like it, actually. Um, so we'll see how it goes. And also, it didn't bleed as much. Yeah, thank you. Um, so... I, did we, did I, here we, hey, here's a question. Do you think we go visit Molly? Or do you think we don't go visit Molly? What do you think? I mean, her house is just right there. We're on our way up here. So we do, I don't think she'll be home, right? Like I actually don't think that Molly's going to be home, but if we're here anyway, we might as well just pass by and see if what's up. Though I do worry about running out of food and dying wow look at that plane crash that is uh kind, kind of beautiful right this game has got really really good graphics even though they're not like hyper realistic they're stylized they're really good though and i really like them that's all that I needed to say about that. Um, yes. Uh, you know what? I, I'm so happy that I could give away a game. That makes me really happy. I, I Look, uh, in case you want to know what happens, I get the Humble Bundle. And um, not not all the games are Mac compatible. So the ones that are not Mac compatible, I give them away. It's like, I figure as long as I pick up one or two games from the Humble Bundle, I'm golden. And of course, it's not like I have the time to play all the games anyway. So it makes me... I get to give away things to folks and it makes me happy. Um, so anyway, I find that the Mac, this, this, uh, this iMac is, I feel like it's beep, it's completely beefy enough, uh, to do streaming on it. Um, it's got good RAM. I think it's good. Um, in this game, I took down a charging bear with two bullets while hiding behind a tractor. It was pretty, whoa, wait, 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 radio mylar. I need to revisit this statement. Did you just say that you took down a charging bear with two bullets? Where did you hit it? 
How did this happen? I feel like this is an epic story that I would like to know more about because that is very impressive. Also, I'm running out of food. That's okay. Probably. It may not be okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're Look, I also don't think Mom is going to be at our house, but since we're in the neighborhood, we thought we might as well just drop by. Be like, hey, murderous acquaintance. How are you doing? Have you murdered anyone recently? Are you going to keep calling me on the phone in weird stalkery ways? How's it going? Just... Also, there are two buildings here. I don't think I remember looking at both buildings the last time I was here, but I think that was because we were in a blizzard and we were just rushing. So I, I actually think there's an entire building here we didn't explore at all, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it does take me several, it takes me, it, sometimes it takes me a while. Um, some weapons are pretty powerful. Hmm. There, there is a shack full of fish, but it's, very, but that shack full of fish is, uh, probably, where is that shack full of fish? I feel like it's here. Like, all that fish we have, all that, all that entire shack full of fish, that's right here. And we are now way up here, so it's gonna be a while before we get back to that fish. But, but we will come back to it. Also, I just don't think we've actually explored that, um, Hey, people who know things more than I do. See that wood? Those those beams that are uh, nailed to the trunk of those trees? What are they for? I've seen that before, but what are they for? Hey, Sea Spider Mix, how are you doing? Hey, Sea Spider! Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I just want to get a help push. It's because we're a little, um, just a little encumbered. But we're not as badly as encumbered as we have been. Oh, harvesting syrup. Oh. Uh, collect sap, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Hmm. I was thinking maybe it was because they would need to protect them during, like, a storm or some such, you know? I thought maybe that might have been it. But I wasn't certain. Um, yes. Speaking of, by the way, I'm pretty certain, but that is a normal climbing thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if our friend is here. I suspect that she won't be, but we're going to just knock while we're here. We could sneak into the basement. You're Canadian? I was just watching. Oh, um... I was watching a video essayist. Nova Scotia! Oh! Radio Mylar, you're from Nova Scotia. Um, I have something to tell you. As a matter of fact. Um, actually, I, when I said I have something to tell you, that's not true. Um, I have something to sing for you. I think the basement might have a workbench, and so we're gonna just check in, check out a workbench. See how we're going. See if we can make some rabbit snares and fix some things and maybe say hi to Molly. Although I suspect... Uh, hi, dead body friend. How are you? That's her husband. She doesn't want to talk about it. Which, fair enough. You know? Um, no, no, I've got a song for you. Because, see, one of my favorite, favorite Canadian folk duos is Ian and Sylvia. And in their album, Northern Journey, which was not their first time, it was like one of their earlier albums. Here we go. Workbench. Y'all. Everything is good at this moment, and I am very happy. We're going to make uh, two. Um, at least the game hasn't gone to the dark place of letting you harvest a deceased. But I mean, you could. You know. Uh, so, 60s Canadian folk duo, Ian and Sylvia. Um, 
And their album, Northern Journey, is basically their, um, they basically do a bunch of North American, uh, North American um, uh, folk songs, right, from, from North America. And they, oh, speaking of which, you know what we can, might be able to do? We might be able to repair some things because we have a workbench. And I feel like that is a thing. I don't have that, but uh, I feel like we have some things that we needed, we needed the workbench for. Let's see. Oh, you know what we don't have? We don't have scrap metal, but I bet there's scrap metal down here. We can fix things and uh, go about our business. I don't need that washer. Let's see. We're gonna we're gonna try to find some scrap metal or things we can. <gasps> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. I have two hatchets, right? I feel like I have two hatchets, which means I can break down one of them for scrap metal. Or did I drop one? I bet I dropped one like an irresponsible person. Why would I even do that? What's wrong with me? I shouldn't be dropping things. I should be keeping things. I should never leave things out of my inventory ever. What's, oh, no, there it is. Okay, let's see. Uh, actions. Harvest. Absolutely. Boom. Uh, anything else we can harvest for scrap metal that I won't feel too guilty about? Uh, you know, I tend to feel guilty pretty quickly about harvesting things. No... I feel like we're good. Okay, so we're going to go and, um, we're going to go fix things. We're going to fix things. Because, you know, you know. Um, let's see. I don't need to fix any of that. No, we're going to just go up here. Uh, boom. All right, let's see. We need to fix our can opener. Yes. Um, so Ian and Sylvia, right? Canadian folk duo. Love them. Uh, we're going to then fix um, this. Ooh. Our work pot. Y'all. Y'all. You should be proud of me. I am fixing things, and things are better than they were before, and I'm not as ridiculous. I mean, I'm sort of ridiculous, but... Ish. Uh, do we have uh, more than one crowbar? No, we dropped it, right? We did. Okay. Um, which means at this point, what do I need to do? I have crafted, I think that's good, right? Uh, no, I can't harvest. The thing is I need um, wolf pelts is what I need. And um, I have, right? So like, for example, I need a cured wolf pelt and a cured gut and I don't have cured things. Um, and for this, I need cured rabbit things and I've got, I think I've got some guts back somewhere else to be fixed, but, you know, let's eat this food, shall we? Because we're a little, a little famished, and then we'll drink all of our water, and doing that lessens our, our encumbrance, so right now we're just being responsible, and we're, look at, look at that, 60, we're gonna save. And I feel very proud of how little we're carrying right now. I feel like you should be proud. I feel like you might not be, but I feel like you should be. Thank you, very proud. Yes. Uh, now, I do not think that Molly's actually home. I think she just calls me and stalks me from far away, but we might as well just check. You know, just, just to see. 
Um, and maybe we could even take like a an hour long nap, maybe? I did, like I used things, it was really good. I don't even, and I'm not even carrying any scrap metal. Like, oh, uh, they will not let us leave the basement, by the way. So looks like that, that tells us that. Done and done. Um, so yeah, I find the Mac to be actually quite good. Um, I've not really had any troubles with it in terms of streaming. Um, the only, th okay, well actually let me be more, let me be, let me be more accurate. There are some things about the Mac and streaming that are a little bit different than the PC. And that is you have to like, basically there are a couple of audio things you have to do. Um, you've got to use loopback or um, I show you audio to do some of the routing. Uh, but once you do that, then you're actually totally fine. Um, and then it's like easy peasy. Although I'm I'm wanting to redo some of my audio things. I just haven't, I just haven't, why am I leaving? Did you hear anything weird? I heard something weird. Okay, I'm probably just being paranoid. There are padlocks all over this house. Worrisome. Okay, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna think about it. We are going to go and try to solve some of this mystery. That's that's what we're gonna do. Um. Yeah. So I, with the exception of this one, there's like one little audio thing you got to think about. Is this also padlocked? It is. Okay, Molly. Okay, that's fine. Speaking of which, like, if you notice, I have got, um, some fresh gut. Only one. I probably need a bit more. And I've got some cloth. I've got some rabbit pelt, but these things need to dry. And it'll take a bit for them to do so. So, you know. Mm. Mm. Um, yes. So, where was I at? I was going to tell you something. Are we going to, we're not going the right direction completely. We're going to head this way. Um, yeah, so the Mac, I think the Mac does pretty well on it. Um, yeah, you just have to go and like, you just have to deal with this one little audio thing, uh, which is about like, you have to do it. You've got to make an aggregate, you've got to make an aggregate audio device. Um, and then once you do that, you're fine. You can dry those things indoors on the floor without needing to come around you. Uh, so, I know I just picked those up recently. All the rest of my stuff is back at the town hall. It's just on me. Uh, so tell me what you did to help with inventory. And please don't say don't carry things, because you have to carry all the things. I am perhaps a digital hoarder. Just a little. Like, not a lot. Okay, a lot. I might be a lot of a digital hoarder. It, it might be, it might be a problem. Uh, but no, here's the thing. All this stuff is like, I had left most of the stuff behind. I've got a bunch of stuff that's drying back at the town hall. I, I took, I left the fresh stuff back there. I only have a couple things with me. So I've been trying to be responsible and look how fast I'm walking. By the way, I'm having root beer today rather than Dr. Pepper. I am out of uh, root beer, uh, out of Dr. Pepper. Peter says, just try that you'll discover more things along your journey. That's part of the challenge. I'm not great at either. It's just hard. Um, I, I, but I, look, Radio Mylar, can I tell you, you weren't here for it, but a thing that was really hard, it was very difficult. It hurt my soul. Between like chapter one and chapter two, I think it is. In order to, you have to get out of the, uh, or maybe it's right at the end of chapter two. You have to get out of um, the, this, like, warehouse. And the only way to get down is to, like, repel down this rope. And you cannot repel if you're over encumbered. And so I had to drop all of the things. All those things that I've been hoarding, I had to drop them. And then I was sad. I just want you to know how hard that was, how it hurt. <laughs> it was a sad day. Um, I, but look, I am getting better, sort of. And at the moment, I have to pick up all these supplies and take them back to the town hall. So, you know, I'm trying to be like better. Also, I do know that there's a survivor that's waiting for you to help rescue them, and I'm not, and I'm kind of avoiding them right now, but that's because 
if I find them, I'm going to feel guilty if I don't pick them up. And I want to go and figure out this other side quest thing first so that I don't feel guilty for not picking them up. To find better. Um... Oh, you got to run for now. Better say hi another time. Thank you. Have Thank you very much for the... It was so lovely meeting you, Radio Mylar. Also, I like radios, and I also like Mylar. So, like, that's good. Uh... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Rissa, like, this bear mauled me, and I lost my shoes. And then I've been running around without shoes. And that has been a challenge. That's all. Uh, have a good night. Um, you know, I've got so much I, I have to do, but we'll be fine in there. By the way, those rocks are beautiful. Those rocks are beautiful. Sea spider, define better. Mm. Well... Here's better. I am dropping things. When I have a place I know I can be at for a while, I do drop things off there. For example, there are a bunch of things that I have dropped off at the town hall. When before, I probably would have kept almost all those things with me. But I didn't. I've dropped some things off. Uh, the shoes are a takeaway because the game that McKinsey didn't deserve them. That's true, actually. McKinsey did not deserve those shoes. Yeah, I hope he's breathing too, because I feel like he's been kidnapped by Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now. You know what I mean? Like, that's just that's just my concern about that. Um, I also need more firewood. Yeah. So, the ball tail, the horror. That was um beautifully shot. It's a beautifully shot film. Oh, there's a Canadian, a Chinese Canadian filmmaker, Accented Cinema, and he does really great, um, really great video essays. He's very, very good. And I like his stuff quite a lot. And he's very kind and thoughtful and nuanced. And I really like that too. And he just did a video. I don't know how recent it was, uh, but he did a video recently enough that has that I, I'm probably going to have to cite it when I, in, in some of my work. Um, and it's about Raya. You know, the, the, the Raya movie, about the, the Disney movie? And people attacked Lindsay Ellis for saying that Raya and uh, Avatar, like, Raya is a little bit derivative of Avatar. Uh, and people were like, how dare you? You're being racist. You're the worst. And that's like, that drove Lindsay Ellis off of... Uh, the internet, actually, uh, which is kind of terrible, but, but, how close are we? Okay, we're on our way. Uh, and this video, so, um, Jiren, uh, Zhao, they did a video where they had, like, this big, like, a couple hours long, a bunch of, like, uh, Southeast Asian folks were talking about how, like, Rai actually is not very good, and their problems with it, and so he actually was doing this thing about this, and, um, not, but he's like, he was talking about like Kung Fu Panda, um, Big Tour in Little China, a bunch of these films. And he was talking about why these films are actually really well loved by a lot of Asian people. And he talks about when you're looking at something that's older and you're wanting to think about problematic, you've got to ask yourself a couple of questions. One, is it better than what came before it? Like basically it's like context, which is part of one of the things I always argue that when you're going to critique something, you need to critique it within context. You have to sort of figure out um, what the context is, right? So one of the things he was saying is that one of the reasons why these other films work is because they're not trying to, like, Big Tour Little China is not trying to tell a Chinese story. It's telling a story that's inspired by Chinese film, but it's not trying to ch tell a Chinese story, right? So that, that looks like a wolf. Would you agree? Those look like wolves. So... Yeah, uh, what, is he, what was the audience it was intended for? What is it trying to say? Um, yeah, here's some wolves hanging out. You know what? I don't think I should have this out right now. I think this is a mistake. I think what I should have out is fire. Right? The third one might be a branch, but why don't we go and 
get some fire, why don't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 no, I see you. I see that this is what's happening. I'm gonna just get a torch. Uh, this one. And, uh, I'm gonna light it, light it, G lighting it, lighting it now. Lighting the, lighting it. Go, light, light, light. Okay, uh, hi. How's it going? How is it? How is it going? I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm going to drop this. Uh, nope. Drop it. And then I'm going to make a fire. Oh, hi. Fire. Make a fire. Make a fire. Uh, 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 go start fire. Start fire. Start it. Start the fire. Oh, gosh. Starting fire now. Go start the fire. Please start the fire. Don't kill me while I'm starting the fire. Start it. Start the fire. Go. Yes, start the fire. Hey, fire. Oh, hey, you know what? Throwing a torch at them does actually ruin their morale. That's good to know. That was really good. Okay. Um, let's... Let's put some firewood in there. That's great. Um, I'm gonna go pick up my torch while I'm here. Hi, Torch. How are you? Uh, how's it going? And you know what? You can look at me all you want, but... Hi. I'm going to throw this at you. That didn't really ruin your morale at all. That's fine. Because you know what? You know what happens when I see a wolf? I see... wolf fur. We're, we're going to, we're going to kill one of these wolves, everybody. Hi, how are you? The problem with these wolves is they cheat. You know what I mean? They cheat. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't, uh, my poor torch. Hi. I'm going to I'm going to kill one of these wolves. I need you to know it. Yes. I just I just killed it. Yeah, they have input detection. YouTube uh, yeah. I know. They to Oh, I ran out of Look, this is one of the reasons why I have both a gun and a a rifle and a pistol because sometimes you run out of bullets. And I have this concern about running out of bullets. So we're going to um, take a... We're going to be over encumbered. It's going to be kind of awesome. Our fire's probably going to go out. We're going to just make our way to that fire. A little over encumbered style. Um, uh, but look, I've got a wolf, I've got wolf thing now, and wolf thing is good because having wolf thing means that I can, um, fix this coat that I'm, that I've got on. I'm going to restart. The, I'm not actually cold, but I do need to cook this food. So if you don't mind, I am going to restart this fire. Do some cooking, chilling, as you do, chilling like a villain. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, y'all, I want to tell you something. It's a a thing to ponder. Also, oh yeah, oh, let's that's a good one. add some fuel. Let's add a little bit more fuel. Let us cook some of this meat that we have. It's a lot of meat that we have, as a matter of fact. That's fine. Let's cook, uh... Let's cook a bunch of wolf meat. This is gonna be our goal in life, is to... You know what? I bet... Do you think we're gonna sleep here? We should not sleep here. We're not protected. So... I feel like that's probably bad. So we probably Oh. 
I come have... on to my house. Come on to my house, my house, come on. Come on to my house, my house, come on. Come on to my house, my house, I'm gonna give you candy. Come on to my house, my house, I'm gonna give you everything. Uh, thank you, Emmy. Uh, Emmy Ksama, thank you for the raid. What were you streaming? And, and was it lovely? How is it going? What is new and exciting? Uh, tell me all the cool things. Uh, because I like to hear the cool things. Uh, you know, that would be lovely. Tell me, tell me what's up. Uh, I want to, uh, welcome in Raiders. And that's 50 minutes. That's an hour. Let's, um, pass time till ready. Take it. How much time do we have? 30 minutes? 10 minutes. Ooh, I can probably cook one more piece of meat. It makes us less smelly so that the, the animals don't come and eat us. Uh, you know, so. What? The sun is setting. Oh. Be a lot colder soon. Dang it. Our wolf meat is not finished cooking. And I don't know how I feel about... Well, it's not particularly cold, though. I feel like I can probably sleep here, right? Don't you think I can sleep here? Or do you think I shouldn't sleep here? I feel like it wouldn't be bad. I'm just afraid of wolves trying to murder me. Look. We're going to do it. We're going to try to sleep here. I know it's I know it's questionable, but we're going to try to do it. Hello, everyone. You had five hours with Persona 5 Royal. My computer reviewed it. Oh, uh, tell me about it. So, on, little fire. yeah. Yeah, if the wind picks up, we're probably not in a good way. But if the wind doesn't pick up, we should be fine, right? I feel like, uh, I just worry about those wolves. The other thing I'm thinking about is that I should probably make, uh, how much water do I have? I don't have a lot of water at all, so that is bad. Um, just going to note that, um lack of water situation um worry worrisome worrisome about that um that's okay because we are going to cook a lot of water and hope uh we're also gonna make some oh, i don't think i have any tea do i oh bummer oh well that's fine uh I feel like it. I feel like it'll be okay. Um, also, we just need to get all this water. Take it. Hey, what's that sound? What's that sound? Do you, do you? Uh... Do you hear that? Do you hear that? It sounds disturbing and distressing to me. I don't know if it's the Aurora, but I heard like a little, there. It's the Aurora, everybody. The Aurora's hit. Okay, well, um, interesting. Um, I'm going to save right now. I just, I just feel like bad things are happening. Uh, you know, I don't, I've never played Persona, but it's one of the games that I want to play. Also, uh, I hope this is not a bad idea. You know, like, I hope this is not a bad idea. I hope I don't wake up dead because wolves ate me. Okay. I'm not dead. I'm not, uh, frostbit. This is not bad. 
and I'm only a little bit over encumbered. This is this is not bad. It's still kind of dark out, but I figure I can. Uh, the aurora is gone. What do you think the aurora is about, everybody? All right, so uh, let's make our way to where we're headed, which is uh, up that way. We're still a little slow, but I think we'll be. I think we'll be all right. I think we'll be okay. No, no, I, I, I. <laughs> let, let Trooper play the Sherpa simulator. But look, I have already put a whole bunch of stuff down. I'm very proud of myself. You waste so much time being slow because you're caring too much. But I need the food. I've put down so many things. So many things. I've, like, I've, it's really. I mean, right now I've got more stuff on because I just have a bunch of food that is okay because I'm going to eat that food and then then I'll be carrying less stuff. It's 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 fine. Trooper, you get to play more games if you stop over encumbering. Maybe I wonder if that's true. I mean, you're probably right. Although to be fair, in the outer worlds, I am not over encumbered. I'm under encumbrance in the outer worlds. I'm going to just say that for the record because I feel like I should get credit. I feel like I should get credit for that. Mm. Y'all, I wanted to tell you RPG things. RPG things. Second draft of Secret Project is off. I sent it off last week. I haven't heard. They, I got acknowledgement of receipt. I haven't had feedback yet. I'm going to probably check it to see how they're doing. Uh, <laughs> Trooper, I put down so many things. Also, oh, put down two things. But I'm, I'm not as encumbered in, in the outer worlds. I'm just going to pick up this stick. That's it. Just one stick. Um, I'm currently thinking you will finish uh, Hibernation and Hernia before you finish the Outer Worlds. I, I, no. I, actually, I don't think I can finish the Long Journey yet, because I don't think the last chapter's out yet, is it? You can't use the carry passing from one game to the other. Dang it. Dang it. Um, so look, I've got some RPG things to talk about that I don't know if I can talk about, but I'm gonna talk about it. So when we come back, we're gonna need to see if we can find that missing person. On the way back. Not on the way there, though. Yeah, so I have some gaming things I wanna to talk to you about. So yeah, so the, the secret project sent off the second draft. I hope they like it. There's some things I wanna to do to add to it here and there, like a little bit of, you know, adding here or there, uh, which I will do when I have a little bit of extra time, hopefully this weekend, maybe. But uh, that's off the plate. Uh, the other thing is something I need to work on. I need to do some prep for the other thing. Uh, and I should be, I should do that real soon. It's just that what I have to do right now, I've got like, I've got like some like administrative stuff I have to do that's holding me back. But I have to do that and I should get onto that like right away. Thank you, Rissa. But I just got word for a new thing. Uh, asking if I wanted to do a thing. Do I want to do a thing? And I was like, ooh, I do want to do a thing. What does that mean for you all? You don't care, but I will tell you. That means I'm going to look to see if I can find a way to run some extra RPGs on my channel. This is a brand new thing. It's a brand new thing. Um, there is a, I just got like, I got a, I got a, an, an inquiry about running an RPG that is not out yet. These would be one-shots. Uh, well, theoretically one-shots. Who knows how long they would actually take. But theoretically one-shots. Um, and uh, so they say they have an estimate of how long it would take to, to play this thing, this RPG. They say one to two hours, which means Clearly not one to two hours. Clearly. Three to so, like, I'm thinking, I feel like 
in their mind, this is a thing that could be done in one four-hour session. You could do both RPGs. But in my mind, that should probably be two separate sessions for each one, is what I'm thinking. So um, I think they're going to be doing their hype at the end of April, which means I need to email them back tonight and say, yes, I would like to do that. But I've got to figure out when I would like to... like. If we do end of April, and like I'm just throwing this out there, I'm like talking through this in my mind. Um, I feel like if I'm going to do this thing, which would be basically, I would say two one shots. Um, you did survive another night, so let's uh, extinguish our lantern, since we don't need it. <laughs> one to two hours in trooper time, about six months. I feel like we could probably do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I think the question will be, especially for going like end of April, that'll be good. The question is, what day and time? What is time really? Does it even exist? I'm not sure it does. So I'm thinking, it feels to me like there are some things I can tell you, but things I cannot tell you. For reasons, I think, Sunday, like maybe Sunday afternoon. So like have this, the one shot Sunday afternoon and then in the evening is Witcher might be the best way to go. I mean, time is perspective. If I could have time in a bottle, when it comes to work, it does. Uh, and I never have enough of it to get all the things done. Mm. Yes. Uh, mm. So look. Um, I'm thinking that maybe Sunday afternoon. If I do Sunday afternoon, then I'll be done in early enough with well, well, well enough time before Witcher in the evening. People on in the UK can watch it without being too late for them or play, and then people in uh, on the Pacific Coast too. So I'm feeling. I'm feeling like Sunday afternoon might be ideal. If I could spend time, well, I would, I would, I would to spend time with you. I would. It's the last thing, you know. Uh, this is what I'm thinking. Um, I feel like that might be ideal. And it would, it would start a thing that I want to continue doing, right? I want to have uh, more... RPG time, but I during the school year, it's not like I have the time to just do it. So I feel like uh, uh, a one-off thing on like on a Sunday would probably not be bad at all. You know what I mean? Like a nice Sunday afternoon, maybe once a month. Uh, also, I really want to run some uh, arena games. So that's the thing that's on my mind. So if I do this other thing, these two things, uh, end of April, that means I could probably do the arena in May. Uh, also, I want to do, I want to test something. Oh, you know what? I had an idea. So, the first Grip Runners Allowed went right, and so I want to do more of them. I'm very, hold on a second. I don't know if I can get where I need to go this way. Well, because there's a bit of a mountain here, isn't there? And... I think we have to go back this way. I think we have to go around. That's what I think. I think we have to kind of like loop in this way as I think. I'm not I'm not certain how to get where we need to go, but I feel like that might be the way to do it. But while we're here, we, let's eat more rabbit. Which we'll like, right? So we're eating some rabbit. So then we're carrying less. Our carrying capacity is better. Uh, and look at look at that. Uh, if you want to do more RPGs on your channel, Trooper, you probably have to stop agreeing to play in RPGs on other people's channels. <sighs> well, you, look. Um, I have basically stopped doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday things because I, cause I'm teaching, right? So basically, I'm not doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So that's... I've, I'm, I've freed up that spot because I'm teaching at the moment. Um, and... I'm going to keep those spots basically free, except for, like, maybe a one-shot or something. Um, but 
I'm going to keep Monday, Tuesday basically free. Because Monday I can't do it because I've got game nights with my students. Uh, and then uh, I'm keeping that Tuesday, Wednesday free for the most part. Uh, so Thursday... Yeah. So basically I've got... What I have is basically... Uh, and honestly, I'm not playing in that many other people's channels games at the moment. If you think about it. I've got Tidal Blades, which is done in two weeks. Mm-hmm. And um, Witcher. Witcher on Sunday nights. So I really only have two other shows. So sad. But... Only two more sessions. But... <laughs> Volatil's like, I heard that. And you're like, what are you not telling us? Uh... Again, that's the Heisenberg principle. Heisenberg dance party is a uh, is a thing that I cannot say about right at the moment. Oh, I can reveal something to you all because now we're done. I'm gonna save. I can reveal something to you because we have finished. So you know how I was running um, uh, Haunted West over on uh, Roll Twenty. We did those five sessions. One of the things that I was um, running about that I was teasing for a while uh, was that I was talking to Chris Spivey. He wanted me to run Haunted West. And so we've been talking about me running Haunted West, uh, though we were talking about having me run it on my channel. But like there was logistical problems that were like not on my end, but like basically it's like just timing things. So we're kind of waiting for the timing to go. But then it got worked out for Roll20. And he's like, oh, 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 oh. I want Trooper to jam it. And I was like, awesome. So uh, one of the things, not recently, that was like on the plate was Haunted West. And then I did it. I just did it on um, on Roll20 rather than my channel. Don't think you ever confirmed. Will Coles be 17 or 18 episodes because of the special first and guest episodes? So normally Coles is 16. The first episode doesn't count. So that puts us at 17. So 17 episodes is uh, was the plan. Um, I don't know if we can hit an 18, uh, because all that has to do with basically whether or not the players, uh, have that last, the one extra week free, I've got to find out. Um, yeah, I was, yeah, he, he, he asked for me personally and I was like, that's really cool. Um, that was like, I think it's because of the Cthulhu Confidential. So yeah, that was very nice. It, you know, maybe let's, I hope he liked what I, I hope he liked what I did. Oh, I should email him. Uh, he's good people. He really is. And I should email him, actually, um, with uh, an observation about the Roll20 character sheet. That is what I should do. Okay, we are trying to get to this mysterious spot. I don't, I'm a little worried, but... Now I need to do a Harlem Unbound Ministries. That is true. That's true. I do. I do. Uh, so anyway, one of the things that I was that I was like saying was a possibility was this Haunted West, and then it happened. It just didn't happen on my channel. It happened on Roll20, which is also cool. So that was one. So at... Ooh, ooh, sprained ankle. Sorry about that. We Let's just... Once we get up here, I know, just keep walking a little bit longer, and we will fix it. I promise. I promise you. We'll fix it right now. Just fix it. Hey, good morning, Maxi JP. How are you doing? Um, I am looking for right now some pain pills. Ouch. Um, I, we're doing really well. Um, and how are you doing? What have you been up to? Ah, okay, okay. Save the game, everybody. Save the game. Just save it. Doing, oh, work day starts soon. What what do you do for a living, by the way? I don't think I know. I mean, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Like, I believe in your privacy, consent. But if you wanted to tell me, you could tell me. Uh, and bef while you're deciding if you want to tell me or not, you want to know what I think is, was always, what you want to know the thing I always thought was kind of funny was that playing some Pokemon, preparing for a Witcher. Ooh, a Witcher tier. Ooh. Uh, Max CJP, could you tell us more about this Witcher party? Because I am always excited to hear more about that sort of a thing. 
I'm always excited. I love the bird sounds here, by the way. Um, hey, look, I could get more firewood. Although I know that I don't actually have the carrying capacity for it, so I, I won't. What is this? I'm working at a big automotive company in Japan in the education department. Oh, oh, that's cool. Hey, there's a crow here. What do you think's going on? Hey, before we go any further, huh? Let's... Locals tell of a ghostly stag. This is the stag's clearing. We're going to go there. We're going to find out what's up. We are a group of seven, and I play tier RPGs for the first time. All of us. Oh, cool. Also, you're gymming for the first time, which will be exciting, but slow this start. Oh, no. You just bought the Tomb of Chaos. Nice. Um, yes. And, like, you've got the life path. Hide in the snow shelter and watch for the... Okay. Sure. Let's use it. I'm resting, y'all. Um... You, it's your, if it's your first time gymming, remember this. Uh, the players... Is that? I can't believe it. Hey. Uh, also, it looks like I just learned how to make new clothing, everyone. Players are not my enemies. N no, they're not. Um, I w what I was going to say is that players are on your side, right? And they're there to have a good time. And so, uh, you know, just remember that they're there to have a good time too, like with you, like with you. Oh, I need a workbench for this, huh? Cured deer hide. Okay. I feel like I should have enough. Cured gut, I need a whole bunch of gut. Workbench. Hmm. I warm, supple, and tough offers a great combination of mobility and warmth. Wear these to feel like the Mad Max of the North. Supple and tough allows great balance of mobility and warmth. Also stylish. I want to make these, but I need cured deer hide. Deer hide. But I would think that I have so much deer hide already, right? But they're not counting it as deer hide. What's up with that? Like uh. Cured leather. I probably have cured deer hide back at the at the place, right? That's probably what I have. We're, this is probably it, right? We're probably fine. I just need some guts. I need to... Yeah, it'll be fine. Um, now if they send you back to Max Body, will you... Ooh, that's a good question. I hope. I hope so. Um, let's uh, exit the snow shelter. By the way, I noticed that you could repair. Oh, but it doesn't need repair. Well then, sweet. Since we're here anyway, why don't we walk around and see what's happening? Speaking of which, forest talkers. I don't know where to find all the forest talker stuff because it does not seem as if they're going to tell me, but let's check it out. Let's see what we can find here. Because maybe we can find cool things. Besides lots of rabbits that I want to eat. <laughs> My body, two left hands. Apologies in advance. Y you, uh, the other kid you play... Yeah, no, uh, yeah, Mackenzie uh, is uh, the other character we play who is sort of knocked unconscious somewhere right now. There are a lot of rabbits here, everybody. And part of me feels like I should kill them and eat them. But... We're going to go just check out. I'm not doing anything. Yeah, what are these wooden contraptions? It's a very good question. They look a little like something I'd find in a horror game. You know what I mean? Also, nobody get distressed or disturbed. Uh, I'm just... I missed. It's too far away. Well, now they're all freaking out. It's fine. 
I, uh, oh, what time is it? Not in real life, but in game. Okay, here's my thought, everybody. I have a thought. I'm going to, um, oops. I'm going to put some rabbit snares down. We're on our way to that little place. We'll probably sleep there for the night. I'll just put some rabbit snares down. I'll wake up and I'll have rabbits in the morning. Well, probably a little frozen, but I think it'll be fine. And um, we've got a new farmstead. Look. And uh, Ice Bunny doesn't have to know that we're going to go and kill rabbits. That will... They're cheating. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're gonna go to that homestead. I don't. I'm not even. I'm not even worried about it. I'm not even bothered. I'm not even bothered. I'm not even bothered. Uh, I'm just whatever. Whatever. I look. I just feel like they cheat. This is all I'm saying. I feel like they cheat, and um, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, poles for pole beans. Now they're climbing vegetables. Oh, neat. The problem is, the minute I aim my gun at them, they start running. Like, I'm gonna hurt them or something. Well, you know what I wonder? Here, I have an idea. What happens if I do it with my bow? Will that be different? Oh, there's some ju oh, super juicy stuff in, in The Witcher. Yeah. Mm. I I don't have a lot of arrows left. It's kind of ridiculous. I killed one. <laughs> uh, it made a sound. Trooper, I'm in the process of making the wrestlers... Uh, let me just let me just take this rabbit carcass if you don't mind. This will come in handy. Uh, although actually, I can take it um, with me and harvest it when I get in the uh, in that homestead. Why don't we do that? Let's make our way into the homestead and then harvest it. Right? I feel like that makes a lot of sense. That seems to be like a good idea. So you're in the process of making the wrestlers and grapples keep in WWE 2K22, new version. Do you want your beard and mustache pink for the new you? Ooh. Good question. Um. Yes. 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 I say yes. And look, here's my other arrow. Which is great. And I do not like how open this place is, but good enough for government work, I suppose, right? I mean, I don't know if wolves are going to try to eat me while I try to sleep in this shelter, but I... Hey, before we decide to sleep by this fire barrel, which, oh, hey, look at all this. Again, this looks real good, y'all. This looks like a good place to be. I just do worry about being set upon by bears because that did happen one time. You remember, I was just hanging out by a fire barrel in a place that did not have full cover and then I was mauled by a bear. Yeah. So I am, as we speak, can I just check out this place and if it is about the same as the other place in terms of like basically broken down, which it really looks like it is, then I'll go back to that first place. But I'm just going to just do a little look-see. Yes. Okay. You know, this game, this game, sometimes bears come and maul you and then... That's less exciting. I mean, I mean, it's exciting. It's just not restful, you know? Or wolves. They sometimes try to maul you as well. But 
we've done really well, is all I'm trying to say. We have been, uh, we've been really good. Yeah, they're not fun bears like women. Absolutely, they're not fun bears. They are the less fun bears. So it is nighttime. I think what we do is save. I think what we do, this is this is what I'm thinking. Um, I'm going to harvest this rabbit. Is what I'm going to do. Because we've got a rabbit, I'm going to harvest it. Harvest. And I'm going to get all the things that we can get from it. Because uh, we're going to need it to make all of our stuff. Great. Then I think we are going to the, the bears are up in our business i think um here's my thought right now i think what we do is we eat this wolf meat which that didn't actually give us a lot of why not okay here we go eat some wolf meat drink some water my thought is, here's my thought. We actually don't do our cooking and all that stuff tonight. We do that in the morning. I think we do a little bit of sleepy time now. Look, I'm really worried that bear's going to kill us. I know that seems very, very um, irrational, but I, I think I'm not going to light a fire... The reason why I didn't want to light a fire is because it wasn't cold. And I want to light the fire in the morning so that um, I can cook this food. Yeah, right? So this 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 is good. I set the traps. The question is, have they been sprung? I don't know how long you have to wait. We're going to start the fire. I mean, we didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. I, we set those traps up, so we should go check them on the way out. Um, but... Looks like I made it through another night. Nice. I hope our traps have been set, have been sprung, and we've got rabbits we could eat. That would be really nice. Um, but... Perfect. Why don't we... Um, Add some fuel. We are running out of firewood, y'all. We don't have a lot. Let's cook our rabbits. And we do actually have a little bit of water we still need to... Uh... Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, great. Uh... Pick up our wrap. Let's just eat it because we're hungry. Might as well. Um, and then I've got some water. And how about you? Some cooked rabbit. We'll just... Uh, oh. I suppose we'll just have to eat that too because we are actually kind of... Rabbits, man. You know what I'm saying? Rabbits. All right. So here we are. Let's uh, drink... I kind of feel like we could probably use more water. I have that feeling. I just feel like we don't have a lot of water left. Uh, and while we're here, look, while we're here, I'm going to just uh, cook more water because we don't really have... Uh, we, could, we could have a lot more than we currently have. Take it, uh, and then we'll just do more water. Probably this is this is actually overkill, but uh, I am I've got concerns, um, so you know, and dang it, um, we're not we've not finished that water.
I would like to finish the water, if you don't mind, because uh, we're going to go soon, actually. But I do want to finish that water, even though uh, we're, we're running out Come of on, little fire. running out of firewood. Oh no! That didn't work. What? Here we go. Is it? It's just overkill. Can you not get to sleep thinking about the implications? Uh, 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 hmm. Yes? Okay. Okay. Last firewood. Well, cedar firewood. Water's done. Take it. Pick up our cooking pot. Drink our water. We've got way too much water at this point in time, just for the record. But we'll drink it. It's it's fine. Uh, we're... We're... Look, you should be super proud. Oh, look at this rifle! That is a rifle. Hope nobody needs this anymore. Here's the thing about hunting rifles: they are very heavy. I'm not going to keep this. I'm going to see if I can break it down, perhaps, because it's heavy, and uh, what does it harvest? I don't know what it harvests. Uh, I don't... Oh, I got scrap metal. Huh. Okay. Okay, I've got some scrap metal, so that's not bad. Um, I'm gonna just clean... You know, look, here's what I'm thinking. We're here at a pretty nice place. Might as well just try to... Try to, you know, see what we can do to keep things. I really need to, I really need some stuff to fix that. And I don't have this stuff and it is a little distressing. Just, just want to let you know it. It's, it's fine. So with the scrap metal, what I can do is I can repair um, items. Like I repaired that, uh. Hey, look at this. Pristine wilderness with barely a hint of humanity to spoil it. If we can bring our message here and succeed, it will show the rest of Great Bear what is possible. Pleasant Valley is where we make our stand. Well, uh, those are choices. Uh, I'm really excited about loading up on food and all of that. I'm feeling very good about it. Now, you might say to yourself, Trooper, I feel like you might be over-encumbered again. And that could well be true. Uh, but some of this stuff I can probably... Um, like, here, this second bedroll, I can just harvest that for cloth, right? So I'll just harvest that for cloth. Um, ooh, we, ooh, 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 ooh. we don't have a workbench, but there are things that I can repair. Um, the question is, what is the best thing that I can... Oh, let me actually harvest this. This will actually reduce my weight a little bit. And also, by the way, I feel like it's also time for me to eat some stuff, which will also lessen my weight. Uh, like, I can eat this energy drink, uh, this energy bar. Did I need that energy bar? Did I? It's unclear. But I do need this water. Look, we're a little heavy. We're a little heavy right now, but um, it is it is stuff that we're going to... It'll be fine. I do want this jerry can, though. 
when I'm repair fit, I probably should. I should. Because I've got things I should do. Looks like this has been here a while. Oh, man. That's too much weight. Oh, well. Uh, let me just see if there's anything that I can do. If I can repair anything. Right? If there's anything I can repair so that uh, perhaps I can drop the ruined can. It's... But it's food. Fine. It's food. Fine. I dropped it. I dropped it. I, I hope... I really wish I could. I really wish I could combine these uh, jerry cans into one jerry can. I would. Like I really do need to give it to the community center because I need to give them food. You know what I mean? Like they need the food, but it's fine. I'll just. I'll just drop it. It makes me very sad, by the way. Uh, just so you know. But I will. I'll drop it. I just want to see if there's anything else that I could... Uh... No, no. That's the... Th Prax, that's the thing. If it's ruined, I can give it to them. That's the thing. You can give them ruined food and it will still count. So food that I can't eat, I can still give to them. And let's repair this. It's a thing. I can give them ruined food. They don't mind, which is awesome. I mean, you know, I mean, one might argue that maybe it's not particularly responsible um, to give them ruined food, but they will eat it. So I feel like that's okay. I mean, if they're going to eat it, what am I supposed to say about it? Also, y'all, I actually think there might be one other thing I can do. Hold on. I think I might have two knives. And if I have two knives, let's see. I think I have two knives. And if I do, I do, I can harvest this one. People, it's going to be night soon. So here's the thing, y'all. Um, it's going to be night soon, and I do need to leave. But while I'm here, I thought what I could do since I'm here at the moment is just check my rabbit traps before I go. So I don't forget that I have them. And uh, if I check my rabbit traps... Then I pick up rabbits, come back here, go to, and then like end the game. It makes me think of Cat from Red Dwarf. All oh, this is money except that bit. I don't want that bit. Yeah, uh, it was a, it was it was a Canadian hat. Oh, I was just thinking about why was I thinking about Canada? I was thinking about Canada for a reason. Now I can't remember what it was. Dang it. That said, it looks to me like the thing I need to repair most is my can opener. That's what it looks like to me. So let me get back. There we go. I'm going to just uh, repair my can opener. Uh, it does, right? It's, it's actually in a real place. It's in um, uh, Great Bear, Canada. And Great Bear, Canada is an actual place. Uh, let's uh, go with these saltine crackers. Keep our health up. And then we'll just drink all that fluids. Boop, 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 boop. Reduce our encumbrance. Because of the... Because of the, the... Yeah, so it's it's in a... Let's save. Real quick, just because I'm paranoid. So my goal right now is to check our traps to see if there are any rabbits there. If there are... Pick up those rabbits, come back to this place, and um, then save. So, I do believe we might have some rabbits. Yes. 
And it's getting late in game, so I don't think we should try to leave. I think we should go back to the fire barrel with our rabbits um, and cook them. Basically set ourselves up to go to sleep, wake up, all that good stuff, goodness. So we come back, uh, we can... Basically what I'm thinking is we, we come back next week for this game. We then move out, pick up that last survival survivor, bring the survivor back to uh, the the town hall. Pick up some fish, right? Like, I, th I think we're like, I think we're going to be good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we're going to be good. Also, it also looks like we have some rabbits. I really wish, um, I, I, I want, I don't, I've got to find out where there's a workbench in that town because I need to make deer skin. I need to like fix my rabbit skin hat and my wolf skin jacket and see if I can make some deer skin pants. And, you know, because if that stuff is good, then uh, I'm going to be really excited. But I don't think I have any deer skin. Don't let me forget I need to pick up those fish. Anyway, so look, this is what I need to think about. The, the two games I want to run, these two one-shots at the end of April, are going to be super depressing, everyone. Uh, so I've got to find, I need to get people who are down with a good depressing game. Is, uh, is what it is. They're super little depressing one-shots. Um, and I'm very excited about it. So, but they're, I don't, they're, they're not, I don't, I don't think I can say what they are yet. So I need to make it, I need to make, I need to send some emails. But I think it'll be really good. Also, um, yeah, 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 yeah. They're gonna, so I've got to go and like, I've got to go and, email the, the game maker who emailed me and I've got to email them back to, you know, um, check in. And then, which is what I'm going to be doing after the stream, get some food, do that. And then, then, once all that's confirmed, then I got to go get some people. And uh, people who like, for example, depressing historicals. I don't know who... I got some thoughts. There might be a blizzard involved. And look at all the rabbits. <laughs> Little one-shot historicals. I'm I'm excited to check them out. Hello, rabbit. It's a frozen this carcass. Come in handy. Mm -hmm. Let me just. I'm gonna be. Uh... I'm gonna have an encumbrance problem. Like, but here's the thing. I know you're saying to me, Trooper, you have an encumbrance problem, and that is currently true. But, oh, Prax. But, the thing is about my encumbrance problem, I'm going to, I will not have this encumbrance problem long because I'm going to sleep and then have to wake up and eat these rabbits. You know what I mean? So it'll be, uh, it'll be fine. Uh, it's gonna just... This will come in handy. Um, blow snare. So, it's gonna just be a little slow while we make our way over there. I wonder... Is there anything I feel comfortable, uh, I don't think there's anything I feel comfortable dropping at here, so, no. But you know what I was thinking, actually? Here's a thought. Um, I want to compare something. Cloth is, uh, no, cloth. Cloth is, what is that? Um, Ten, ten kg. What about bandages? Bandages are the same. They're the same. They're the same. It doesn't matter. Okay. We're, uh, yeah. It's nine thirty. I'm gonna go. Uh, but I'm going to do an outro as we slowly maneuver towards safety. Uh, and. Um, We are moving. Also, let's save. So, um, let's talk about what's up. Um, 
I'm going to go Hawkeye, KY Hawkeye will be hosting Critical Role on his channel tonight. Um, and then, um, today's what? Thursday? So tomorrow's Friday, so you can catch me uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern on my channel for City of Light and Shadow. We have Pooja returning as the guest, as a Pritam sister for a garden party, uh, which it's very windy and I'm going against the wind and that's slowing me down, by the way. Cool. Uh, so that'll be really fun. Saturday at noon, I'll be playing um, The Outer World, which I'm really excited for since I've been able to play in a while. And then at 4 p.m. it will over at Eastern on Table Story will be Tidal Blades, which is a new cypher game, which is currently under Kickstarter. Uh, Sunday at 9 a.m. I will be playing um, Simply Divine with Dot, a little red dot and on my channel and her channel simultaneously. And then at 8 p.m. Sunday night, over at Praxagora the Smophoria, we'll be playing The Witcher Road's Home, uh, and then back again here on Thursday for um, The Long Dark. Uh, and KP is... KP, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see how they're going to deal with this garden party, since they uh, have got a lot of people there. Of course he plays a day I have to do a TTRPG of my own to go to. Oh no! Yeah, you catch the outer words in the VOD. It'll be fine. Uh, normally we do that Wednesday mornings. It's just that uh, Dot had a Wednesday morning thing uh, this week. So she's like, you want to do it on Sunday morning? I was like, sure. So we just had to move our normal, regular date from Wednesday to Sunday. But we should be back to Wednesday next week. Um, that's me. Note that secret things are moving. Um, and there are things to talk about. So this is uh, all of my excitement. And I... Oh, I've got socials. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Academic Foxhole. Uh, I've got a, a Patreon at Academic Foxhole, which goes to pay the cast for the shows that I, I run. Um, Trooper SJP here. Uh, also on YouTube, where I have the... Come on, wind. What are you doing? I will just note that the wind actually is slowing me down, which is very cool in terms of physics. But I wish the wind were not blowing this direction. I wish the wind were blowing the other direction so that I would move faster. Those are just the things I wanted to tell you. Um, I feel like uh, it's being unfair and cruel. Uh, so anyway, that's that. And um, yeah, those are the places. You oh, and we have a Discord. Join the Discord if you want to. You can hang out and chat with us. Um, that'll be it, everybody. So let me, let, me, uh, let me do this. Thank you all for being here. You are the best. Um, I will show you new RPG books that I got, but I'm going to see you next week. I'm going to eat, take care of yourselves, and I will catch you all on the flip side. Bye, everybody!